Welcome to NK Telco Sports, presented by Grand Lake Health. We are here at Sydney Memorial Stadium to bring you high school football where the Waynesfield Goshen Tigers take on the Lehman Catholic Cavaliers. Tonight's game is brought to you by American Trim, First National Bank, Keyhole Pizza, Winner's Meats, NK Telco, Frost Roofing, Hometown Opportunity, Minster Bank, Ply Gem, Precision Strip, Sweeterman Pharmacies, New Knoxville Supply, Fowler's TV, Wilson Health, Cy Sweeterman Incorporated, Carriage Works, Kogi Plumbing, Heating and AC, Wayne Trail, Cargill, Wagner's IGA, SecureComp, St. Henry Bank, The Spot, and St. Mary's Foundry. Thank you to those fine sponsors that allow us to bring you this. And this is Northwest Central Conference football action tonight. I'm Jeff Henshaw. Alongside me this evening is Matt Everidge. And I said it right there, Matt. Big Northwest Central Conference game. Both these teams uh, looking for a big win following a tough loss last week. Yeah, both teams were shut out last week. Coach Richard Grohl coming in with the Cavaliers. He's not got the season that he's wanted. They're coming in at three and four, number 13 in their division. So they're out of the playoff picture as of now. But with three wins at the end of the season, you can get in with four losses in the small school bracket. Flip side, Wayne Waynesville Goshen coming in with Shane Wireman coaching them to a five and two record right now. Number eight in their division, so they are in the playoffs if it was to end tonight, but they too are coming off a 6-0 loss. Should be a good matchup and a, a key matchup here late in the season. We'll take a short break and come back with the opening kickoff here on NK Telco Sports. In the Grand Lake Health System, great health care is about creating a personalized experience. We're here for you at every stage of your life to care for you with compassion and courtesy, to support you with an honest approach that values communication and actively seeks your collaboration, to treat you in a safe, welcoming environment where quality and service always come first, to create truly grand experiences. For more, visit grandlakehealth.org slash grandexperience. Welcome back. A lot of blue and yellow on the field tonight. The Waynesfield Goshen Tigers will be sporting the yellow helmets, the white jerseys tonight. On the opposite side, the Lehman Catholic Cavaliers will have the blue helmets and yellow jerseys. So keep that as your reminder. A lot of blue and yellow this evening on a beautiful night football, Matt. Uh, for this time of year, good weather. A little breezy maybe, but boy, it could be a lot worse you know, compared to last week's rain. Yeah, absolutely. 58 degrees is the uh, game time temp. Going to get down to about 46 by the end of the game. So that kick's received by Lehman. Ryder, short little pooch punt. Siebendek with the kickoff and quickly will go to our keys of the game tonight. And they are first for the Waynesfield Goshen Tigers, sponsored by Keyhole Pizza. For Waynesfield Goshen, they need to finish in the red zone. If they get down by the goal line, they have to get the ball in. No turnovers, ball security is key for them. And the defensive assignments versus the option read plays. You're gonna see a lot of PTO. We're going to see one right away option. Here. Yep, they're going to be put on display, I think, right away here as Lehman with the first attempt passed down the field, and it is nearly intercepted, so a dangerous first attempt there for the Cavaliers, and we'll look at their keys to the game tonight. And for the Lehman Catholic Cavaliers, their keys is going to be the rush defense. they got to just protect the line, control the line. Only 22 players, that's going to be hard to do with a team that's about twice their size. They need to force turnovers on defense and the offense just needs to bounce back. They need to have a good clean game. At home, especially after getting shut out last week. So RJ Bertini, the senior quarterback on second and 10, handoff to number five, Brandon o or Brendan O'Leary. Little, little room there for him, Matt. Yeah, run for a negative one yard. And that's a nice welcome, if you will, for the Tigers that they give to Brendan O'Leary. He, before the game, was named the homecoming king. Brendan O'Leary and the homecoming queen for Lehman Catholic belongs to Hope Anthony. Congratulations to Brendan O'Leary and Hope Anthony, the king and queen this season for Lehman Catholic School. And quickly a third and long and, boy, a quick three and out as nice job by the Waynesfield defense doing exactly what the coach wants to. They're going to get the ball back. and. 
might have pretty decent field position. Yeah, I imagine they'll put pressure on this with a team that's got a little bit of a chip on their shoulder getting shut out. I mean, they was playing some stiff competition last week and the weather just was not working for either team. Well, back to punt for Lehman Catholic is Andrew Barhorst. So he will look to back to push the Tigers be back. Evan Miller. Evan Miller, number four for Waynesfield. And good kick, and Miller will watch it bounce. He wants what kind of hop it takes. It takes a Lehman Catholic hop, and turns out to be a very excellent punt. The ball will go from the 30 all the way down to the Waynesfield 24. Nice punt by Andrew Barhor. So the offense for the Tigers comes out. They will face us, a layman defense that was going to try to put some pressure on them. They have a couple of good eye backs in the backfield for the layman Catholic Cavaliers, Joel Rickle and also um, Kyle Searson. So keep an eye on those guys. And that will be number four, I'm sorry, number three and number 32. Ball on the 24. And Cooper Roberts, just a sophomore starting. Nice run up the middle. Good hole up to the 30. So nice pickup on first down. And that first ball carry was number 32, as we talked about. Kyle Searson. And look for him to get a lot of touches tonight. And a good start, positive chunk place keeps their offense, Matt, in system. You know, nice pickup of six yards. That makes your offensive play selections here on second and third much more manageable. Absolutely. Lehman coming out with a 4-3 defense right now and then have a monster back sneaking in. They just moved to a 4-4. See if they can't control that line. Nice job covering it up there. Much better job by the Lehman defense. Little gain, if any. So now a third and four. So we've had five plays in the total net of five yards. So defenses have come to play. Yeah, at least here in the first series or of plays, yes, they have. And both teams, again, coming into this game to must win for each team. No one has guaranteed a playoff spot yet. No one's also mathematically eliminated yet. So long way to go on this one. But right now, a lot riding on this game as Cooper Roberts will make the pass and the catch, I believe, to number five. Leighton Campbell, mm -hmm. so big first down there. Eight yard gain, nice pickup. I think if you're gonna be throwing the ball, if you look at the flags, the wind's just dead. There is no wind on the field right now. But if you're gonna, if you're gonna be passing, now's the time to do it. You don't wanna get down into the 40s and try to pass up here in Ohio. Yeah, it gets a little bit cooler. The ball gets that natural little moisture on it, seems like makes it more difficult to catch. Right now though, Right now, first down 10, ball on the 38. Another handoff, and I believe that's going to be the other eye back, Joel Rickle. And he will lumber forward, Matt, to about the 42-yard line. Four-yard pickup. Three so, rushes so far for 11 yards. Nice little setup here. Two and, passes, or one pass, three rush. What a big third down conversion. I mean, that's the difference between, you know, Good teams and bad teams, a good third down conversion. Even if they stall now, they move the ball a little bit further down the field. Field position becomes an issue, but they convert on a third and short, whereas Lehman had a third and long and you know, much more difficult to get. They threw the incomplete pass. Roberts looking, running. He'll be tripped up at about the 44 yard line. So give him a couple yards on that rush. Ball moves out to the 44, brings up third down and four. Again, just got done saying what a big third down they had the last time. Here's another one. If they want to keep the layman offense off the sideline, Matt, big third down play coming up for them. Absolutely. Waynesfield, they want to be third down and manageable. Anything under five yards, that's manageable for this team. They still have the whole playbook open to them here on this play, spreading them wide to the left. Yeah, three receivers off to the left, one in the backfield with Cooper. sophomore quarterback Cooper Roberts throwing, and that time the pass incomplete. Open receiver or intended receiver was Joel Rickle, but the pass incomplete. And that will be a punt. Pretty balanced offense we've seen so far out of Waynesfield. So they do get a first down, but the drive stalls at their own 44 yard line. And doing the punting now, I believe, is going to be the same guy that kicks it, and that's number 56, Ryder Siebenek. He gets it off under some pressure. Fair catch down at the 25. And the second possession for the Cavaliers will begin on their own 25. 
So it was good kick. Both kickers have had nice punts, Matt. So sometimes that can be a critical part of the game. You can shank one, the other team gets nice field position. But so far, two punters doing what they're paid to do. You got to give it to Coach Richard Roll. He only has 22 players, but yet six players over half the defense just came off the field. So they are getting some rest on that, even though he's low on talent, or not numbers. low on talent, just low on numbers. Yeah, both teams really, Waynesfield does have a few extra players, but really small school numbers for both teams. With the keeper, a gain of about, give him maybe another loss again, Matt. A loss of one. So Bartini, the carrier, or the ball carrier, another loss of yards, puts it back on the 25, second down. And 11. And this might be a good opportunity for Lehman just to get something short, just a short pass, get an in route. Bertini with it does exactly that, kind of a safe pass, well defended, but Andrew Barhorse with a catch. And they're saying that's a fumble, turnover. A and a fumble, so I think number three possibly recovered it. If that is the case, it'll be Joel Rickle. Take another look at here, Matt. And here's the ball, gonna be thrown out, just a nice little pass. And he does make a football move. I don't know if he had total control of that or not but they are gonna call it a turnover. There's no replay here. So the They're first turnover, rush. ball on the 24, great field position for, and with that play here, Coach Richards roll, hustles out on field, calls a timeout. We'll take one with them. You're watching high school football on NK Telco Sports. American Trim's story started in 1951, and our long family legacy continues today. We are a third-generation family-owned business with locations in Sydney and Walpaw, and we're hiring for manufacturing positions on first, second, and third shifts. Part-time and full-time positions are available for entry-level and skilled individuals. Please apply at www.amtrim.com or in person. American Trim is a proud sponsor of high school sports and our communities. Come be part of our story. Welcome back. We'll take another look at the last layman Catholic play on a pass from Bertini out to Barhorse. Watch it again here. Bang, bang. Not a good angle on that side. The official right there to see it. So give the pass completion, although really for no yards, Matt, but a critical turnover. We talked about turnovers as part of our keys. And I think the most yeah. important thing that happened there, though, was the, uh, the Tigers was straight out ready for the offense and Lehman was just caught with four players off the field. It was 11 on seven. If they would have got that ball snapped, that could have been a quick score. Yeah, the timeout the taken by the Tigers as they regroup here, 7.52 to go in the first quarter, ball on the 24 yard line. Handoff off the right side to Joel Rickle and positive yards about give him three maybe. And moves it down to the 21. Second series for Waynesfield for just joining us. 7.37 left in the first. Clock moving and both teams right now have done a much more running, if you will, than passing. So I could keep the clock, if you will, pretty quick here as Lehman will defend Waynesfield Goshen, try and take advantage of a big turnover here and they get the ball to Searson. He just keeps his feet moving. Matt takes it down for another, let's say, four yard chunk of yards inside the 20 down to the 17, now they're in the red zone. And you mentioned our keys of the game, what Coach Wireman said, capitalize, score, if you will, take advantage of the red zone opportunities, and they're, they're in that right now on the 17. Yeah, they don't want to count on a kicker to put it through for three. They need six here, and they need it now. That would be a good way to capitalize off that turnover is a six-point touchdown. Right now they need to get offensively minded and nice defensive play by the Lehman Catholic Cavaliers. It's going to take them back three yards. John Edwards, number 50, tackle for loss. And you said just that, Matt, back for a minus three on that rush attempt. Big play by the Lehman defense. They're going to have to have a couple more of them. And not real sure here is where we are. Well, it's already, Matt, fourth down. So decision time, not real sure what type of kicker. Most high school kickers aren't field goal at you know their accuracy isn't such not for 37 yeah so this would be fourth down now and five ball on the 20. Cooper Cooper Roberts open receiver nicely thrown to hang on to it 
And I believe and they're saying did. he was on the ground. First down from the 20, right down inside to 10 to the nine. First down. Oh, another, in this case, fourth down conversion. Take another look at it here as Cooper Roberts nicely thrown over one defender and in front of another one. And good hands right there by number five, Leighton Campbell, a six foot junior. Big play by the Waynesfield Goshen Tigers. They keep the drive alive. And now first and goal from the nine. Only 37 offensive yards so far in this game. But Waynesfield's right on the bridge. Open receiver back the end zone overthrown. So nice play action there is. Cooper as Roberts coming in now. He's two for four for a total of 19 yards passing. Brings up a long second and goal from the nine. It's always odd when you get down near the goal line, you get to one of these first and goals and it's from the nine. It's, it's like, it's good, but it's also the worst case scenario. You can't get a first down, the field shrinks. You know, the defense doesn't have to defend as much real estate, but you have to go almost 30 feet to get the score. Nice draw up the middle. Cooper That's Roberts, boy, yardage. they keep the pile moving. He gets inside the five, put him down to about, well, he didn't get to the four, so we'll say the five. So a nice push there on second down. A nice legalized bush push. Yeah. Has come a long way. Yeah, it has. I never quite understand if I like that or not. Depends if you're on the offensive team doing the pushing or the defensive team trying to stop it. Well, it pretty much depends on if my team's doing well, the pushing. Well, that's, that's another way, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not real sure how you rule that or interpret it, but a third down ball, they say, was on the four. And Rickle, not much running room and drug down right at the line of scrimmage. That was just nice outside containment by Layman Catholic. MacGyver and Edwards in on a stop, stop good pursuit. And uh, another critical now, fourth and five. So the Layman defense is doing what it needs to do. Normally you'd be punting on fourth down, but in this situation, Waynesfield going for it again here. They were one for one on fourth down, that last one on their last fourth down opportunity. The only way they're gonna get it now is if they score. Roberts keeps it under pressure. Open receiver is caught. Touchdown number 13, Cole Slagle. So a five yard TD reception is, and there is no touchdown holding on the offense. So scratch out that five yard TD and somewhere in that protection the Tigers hold and Roberts had to move around a little bit. So maybe as he was scrambling around the offensive lineman, I, I think it's tough for them. They don't know where the ball is at or where he's at. So they're trying to block and they're calling holding from the spot of the yep. foul as well. So that's a 15 yard mark off. So fourth and forever at yeah, this, this point. This makes it much more difficult. Yeah, I don't know how many fourth and 20 plays the offensive coordinator has. Um, boy, it's tough. You had the touchdown catch. I look for Lehman to send the house at this point. Rob, there's going to be another penalty. Sides. Something out of sync there on the snap count. Push it back five more. So uh, what turned out to be a, a nice drive has put the ball back now. Matt to the original, basically he spotted the fumble. It started this drive on the 24. It's out to the 25. So net effect, they've earned negative one yards, but uh, had the ball down to the five and for a moment had a touchdown. Well, if you're layman at this point, this is good as a turnover. I mean, if you can stop yeah. them and that's Any. and football with being a, such a game of momentum, this could be the spark they need. Anytime you can stop a team inside your red zone off of your own turnover, you'll take it. And uh, they have a chance here of avoiding some type of defensive holding penalty. The pass is thrown and it is incomplete. A couple of Tigers receiver down there. One of them was Cole Schlegel who had the first touchdown catch that was wiped off, but uh, no one comes down with it, falls to the ground, turnover on downs. That was an awkward little drive there. Um, it's kind of like a, an accordion squishing back. And But everything that we talked about on the keys just worked out on that. On the Waynesfield side, they wanted to get better inside the red zone and on the Layman side. Layman side, they wanted a turnover and that is just as good as a turnover. It's actually better because 
to let your defense know we can hold them. Well, it's right back where we started now. Fourth or four minutes to go here in the first quarter. So following the fumble, they will start on a 25. And that pass down the sideline and intended receiver is Brendan O'Leary. Incomplete. Trying to maybe stretch the field a little bit, at least keep the defense honest and brings up now second and 10 with the clock stopped at 356. That's the seventh offensive play for Lamb and Catholic. They're at negative three yards. Three of the plays went into the negatives for a yard. They need something small. They something just need to, get to start them small. Yeah, they've, the negatives never help. I mean, going for the long shot on this is, you're basically looking for a flag at this point. The pitch nearly thrown behind Barhorse. He luckily grabs it. It'll be another negative play, Matt, as you mentioned, as the ball will go all the way back now. About let's pass the 20 inside to, to the 17. So seven yard loss. Still have not got one offensive yard. So no, give that got, to the Waynesfield defense playing great defense. They've had some real nice pursuit. They've been, you know, in the backfield almost as the receiver or the I should say the running back takes the handoff. Bertini again will have to scramble and he's not going to be well, he's able to finally throw it out of bounds. I don't know if he was yeah, he made it grasp. back to the line of scrimmage. I'm wondering if they blew the play dead. They have it marked back on about the 15 or 16. He was in the grasp. If he's at the 15. Let's see once here. The ball was on the 17. And they will keep it so it will be ruled an incomplete pass, I assume. Couldn't catch the number of the Tiger that had him. Just could not get him down. So credit to Bertini for maintaining his balance. Saves his team a few yards. But boy, they're going to be punting right on their two-yard line. Nine offensive plays, 10 yards to the negative for Lehman. Barhorse number 12 will hope to get a good leg on it. A low line drive, Evan Miller with the catch, running catch on about the 46 of Lehman, and he takes it down to the 34. Nice so, play on special teams there. They had a small wall built, and he was able to pick up some yards. Evan Miller, number four on the reception, or I should say the return, and it's always kind of good when you're the punt returner, Matt, and you get one going forward, and it was a low line drive, so not a lot of hang time to let the defense get down there. And uh, maybe Lehman should be fortunate he's only standing at the 34, not closer or even in the, the house. So Exactly. In high school football, you don't want to worry about distance as much as you want height. You can't outkick your coverage here. So good starting field position again for Waynesfield. Can they take advantage of it? Cooper Roberts, his pass, short, modest gain to Leighton Campbell, but uh, positive yards of about maybe just one. Well, that's kind of what you need to do at this point. You got to take the small steps before you can run. And most time, most teams set the, the pass up with the run. Tonight, it looks like they're going to have to set the run up with the pass. Are the Tigers? Again, this is golden opportunity. The second time here early in this first quarter is it down to the two minute and 35 second mark. See if they can take advantage of it. The layman defense is going to have to come up with some big plays like it did on that last drive. But really it was the Waynesfield offense that really kind of self-destructed on a couple penalties. There's a nice run for a first down just past the marker down inside the 25 to the 23. Give him 10 on the rush. And that was number three, Joel Rickle, senior running back. Taking that look at it here, Matt, watch the opening on the right side. Yeah, they just opened it wide up. Boy, nice, nice block, block back by 74. Or 74, 72 are both of them. Austin Burt and also, it had to have been 72, I guess, because was there 74 on there? Uh, I thought it was 72, Burt, the one I saw. But nonetheless, first down. That's another first down for Tigers. and. Searson will be stood up, but again, not until he gains another good chunk positive play of about five. Waynesfield's rushed 11 times out of the 11. Nine of them have been for positive yardage, so that's where the bread and butter's at. Well, they, again, manageable down in distance now. Second down and six, maybe second down and call it six from the 18. Passing three of six for 21 yards. Play clock. Nearing 10 seconds, so plenty of time for the Tigers to get the snap off. Roberts hands off to Rickle. He is not touched until he gets inside the 10 down to the 7. So another 
11 yard gain, another first down as Rickles have himself a nice first quarter rushing the football, especially here on this drive, some big yards as you see number three there in the huddle for the Tigers. And as the players start to come in and out for Lehman, you can see the attrition already starting to wear on them. So first down and eight from the eight, first and goal. I think we was just here, wasn't yeah, we? Not too long ago, Searson inside the five, down to maybe the four. So this is where the Tigers self-destructed last time with penalties, a holding and a false start. And then they were, you know, back at fourth and long. So Lehman's going to have to hope that their defense can create some havoc here as we near the end of the first quarter. This could be the last play, depending on if it's a, where the clock all stops, about 10 seconds difference between the play clock and the game clock. Running it right up the middle. Nice job of protecting the line by Lehman. Give that to number six and number 50. Tagging up. So Edwards and Coop. Well, the ball Coopsie. down to the three, the clock running. And I think that will be the last play of this first 12 minute quarter here at Sydney Memorial Stadium. The teams will walk the distance of the field and it'll bring up a third down and goal for the Tigers when we return here at NK Telco Sports. Schwiedemann Pharmacies began serving the people of Auglaize County in 1916 when Urban Schwiedemann purchased the building and business from J.H. Hoffman. The New Bremen location is one of the longest running pharmacies in the country, with over 110 years of serving its patrons. Since then, four more stores have been added, Coldwater, St. Mary's, Minster, and Wapakoneta to round out the group. Our services include prescription refills, home medical equipment, nursing home services, customized compounded medication, vaccinations, and so much more. Supply Gem Residential Solutions is part of Cornerstone Building Brands, North America's largest manufacturer of exterior building products. And the success of our company is directly related to the contributions of our employees. We are currently looking for machine operators, maintenance technicians, forklift operators, and more to join our growing team at our facility in Sydney, Ohio. Supply Gem offers competitive pay, a full benefits package, as well as opportunities for bonus pay and long-term advancement. Become a part of our strong foundation. Welcome back as you take a look at the Lehman Catholic student body section here on homecoming. The defense for the Cavaliers is going to have to come up big, Matt. Uh, two play, I'm serious, two uh, down territory here, ball resting on the three yard line. Yeah, Goshen's already showed they're not interested in uh, kicking field goals, but give it to Lehman. They have had that bend, don't break defensive style, so they've protected this line once before about five minutes ago, so we'll see what they can do here. So Roberts will get the ball from center. Hunter Craig, number 74. No handoff to Searson, and he is hit in the backfield by John Edwards. Gain of none. Nice right play. back to the four. So a loss of one. And Searson. And we have a player, we have a player down. down. So we will. Um, Let's go ahead and thank our sponsors. I'd like to thank our sponsors for tonight's game, American Trim, Frost Roofing, Hometown Opportunity, Minster Bank, Ply Gym, Precision Strips, Schwederman Pharmacy, New Knoxville Supply, Fowler's TV, Cy Schwederman, Wilson Health, Car uh, Carriage Works, Kogi Plumbing, Heating and AC, Securecom, Cargill, The Spot, St. Henry Bank, St. Mary's Foundry, Wagner's IGA, and Wayne Trail. We'd also like to thank uh, the main sponsor here uh, for all of our sports programs. Grand Lake Health. Grand Lake Health. We will take a break here as the players will uh, take a break as well. So when we come back, we'll resume action here from M Sydney Memorial Stadium here on NK Telco Sports. Carriage Works has expanded and now can hold up to 25 cars in our service bay. Carriage Works thrives on customer satisfaction. We accomplish that by providing top of the line technology. CarriageWorks now uses a laser beam system to measure down to the millimeter of factory specs to better service you and get you back on the road. CarriageWorks has a brand new top of the line paint booth that uses waterborne paint. There's no job too big or too small for CarriageWorks. We are certified collision specialists. Come in and see us today. Welcome back, number two, Landon McIver. 5'10 junior walking off the field, and that is a good sign he is walking, although a little bit of a limp with him. We'll hope that he can um, 
be treated and uh, be healthy. So two way starter plays wide receiver and defensive back. Yeah, he never with limited numbers. If you mentioned Matt, not a lot of support players, but uh, he will try to walk it off back to the game action. Fourth down for fourth down and four yards a whistle. And timeout. timeout Layman Catholic will stay here and I'll while we have a minute here, we already went through our spots. Just want to remind everyone this Northwest Central Conference game, a big game for both these teams in the playoff implications. Right now, the leading team in the Northwest Central Conference is Perry. They're undefeated in league play, 4-0. Lehman is tied for second with Hard Northern. They are 3-1 each. Waynesfield currently is tied for fourth with Riverside at two wins, two losses. USV's sixth place at 1-3 with Ridgemont and Elgin eighth place right now at 0 and 4. So these two teams you know, need to win. That's where the computer points come into play. As we mentioned earlier, Waynesfield enters tonight's game in Division 7, Region 28, currently in eighth place. Lehman not out of it. They're down a few positions at number 13. But really, you need to win out because other teams, as they finish up these final three games of the season, depending on who they beat, they can jump above you. So big play here is they will throw it. And that is three to four on the pass and catch. The, the flip to Rickle, the pass to Evan Miller, a four yard touchdown. So a little trickery there. Nice play by Rickle as he hits Evan Miller on a four yard catch. So the game's first score, take another look at it here, Matt. Watch what uh, Coach Wireman designed here. And Robert's going to toss it out, and it's just a little heave. I don't even know if you want to call that a pass or just a heave over. But nice job getting the defense to bite on the run. And the kick up is good. And the kick is good. So Ryder Siebenek with the extra point at 11 minutes, 31 seconds to go. We'll take a break and come back with more second quarter football here at NK Telco Sport. For over 150 years, Cargill has been helping people be successful worldwide. Cargill has always done business responsibly and in a way that makes us proud. Whether it is educating farmers in India or providing bikes to students with perfect attendance right here at home, Cargill is helping people thrive. The Sydney plant is just one piece of a global company that provides employment for hundreds of thousands, food for the world, and support for thousands of businesses. Be a part of something great at Cargill.com. Kogi Plumbing and Heating is your Bryant Factory authorized dealer. We have brought the best of comfort, control, and plumbing services to the St. Mary's area for over 60 years. We have been Reader's Choice winners for the last four years running and excel at providing our customers with efficient and reliable heating and air conditioning as well as responsive service when a plumbing emergency arises. We insist that the products we install in our customers' homes and businesses offer the same performance and value that we expect ourselves. Call today for your next plumbing and heating or air conditioning needs. Bryant, whatever it takes. 11 minutes, 31 seconds ago, Lehman finds themselves down by a touchdown as Sibanek will put the ball in the air and that one's gonna skip out of bounds and a penalty will be tossed. So the Cavaliers will have good field position following this placement of the ball. I'm not sure if it will go to the 30. Should go to the 35. 35 is where they will point to. So good field starting position, Matt. Uh, the Cavaliers though have, you can almost put what they've done on offense in a thimble, right? Oh, uh, absolutely. I mean, it's it's not it's not for the faint at heart at this point. I mean, they're at negative 10 yards and uh, nine plays. They really need that first first down. Well, and they're looking back. for it hard. Well, sorry, Matt. Um, I thought they were going to place the ball. And I guess one of the options is you can take the penalty yards and force them to re-kick. And that's what Lehman will do. Coach Richard roll with the decision there, so they will move the ball back from the 40, which is where they normally kick off and have Sibanek kick from the 35. Not real sure what his options were. I, I don't know, I should say. The ball scooted out around the 20 down here. You know, I, I don't know the rules, so we'll trust Coach Richard Roll. His, what he wants to do is have them re-kick. Well, I'm a firm believer in Billy Bean, where he said, if the team wants to give you something for free, you take it. So we'll see if they get an advantage by getting this ball. Another line dry out one's gonna skip out of bounds again. So that one skips out at the 25. They can take them back five more. And another appears everyone's backing up, so they will move it from the 35 to the 30. Well, I guess uh, he's making Billy Bean look stupid at hmm. this point now. 
I still well, think I'd take the ball at the 40 if I could get it. I mean, that'd be the best field position that Sydney's had all day. So Lehman Catholic just letting them self-destruct themselves. And it was really, you know, they did score in their last drive, Matt, but the drive before their offense self-destructed the, the, the Tigers and cost them a touchdown. You know, so right now, Waynesfield not maybe playing real clean, although they did force a turnover, didn't capitalize on it, but then the defense has really been keeping their offense or keeping their, if you will, their team in it, and then they come down and convert on that kind of a trick play to get seven on the board. I think this would be a good time to overcompensate because there is a huge opening between the 30 and the 40 over here. Well, see he kicks it the same, and that's off a player, and that's oh a light my. ball. Oh, my. It went off a Cavalier. And it looks like it is recovered just past midfield by the Tigers. So another turnover. That was just a lackadaisical play. We've got the replay hit, we'll here. Take a look here. Sivanek again hit it hard and it went off of a player and not able to recover as it squirts out there is recovered by a Tiger. Can't yeah, quite catch like number 22. I want to say or 23. So give that to Brian Ferris. Nice job recovering that. Special teams can make or break your team. And tonight, it's not helping Lehman out at all. Well, they botched the kickoff. Nice defensive hustle. Caught him for a negative, call it eight yards. Well, that's just tried to do a sweep. Yeah, big loss as they will go back from the 23 down. Well, not the 23, but um, the 48. Yeah, my number's written down wrong here, so. so. Definitely look for Waynesville to be passing deep at this point, second and 18. So a rough start to another. That's a false start on the quarterback. Yeah, again, just not in sync there. That's gonna push him back to the 35, a penalty. And, uh, you know, what a series of events here. Two missed kicks, if you will, out of bounds. And they, I don't know if they, quote, tried to onside it because that's the third time they kicked it hard on the ground, get the ball back, and now have been negative plays, negative play, and find themselves at second and forever, 24 from the 35. So, well, I mean, at this point, if it wasn't for a trick play, there would be no score. True. That's, I mean, and we are week eight, and you know the Mac, and you know the – other small schools around here are just salivating, saying if you're playing this rough, wait till you get a hold of us. Well, the pass incomplete over the middle, and, and there's going to be a, yep, I think a penalty. They hit a defenseless receiver after the ball was thrown, intended for Cole Slagle, but I think it's going to bail out the Tigers. Third and 24. Four. It was third and 24. We'll see once this should be an automatic first down. If they agree that it was a unnecessary hit, however you want to deem it, um, We'll let the guys on the stripes come up with the call. Personal foul. They're talking to Lehman at this point, which I don't okay. no, he, there the There was a late hit on the receiver after it was over his head. So they're giving him 15. That's, that's the big boy variety. So that moves it from the 35 to the 50. So a penalty now. I Puts don't right know if they're field. giving them an automatic first down on this. I think they're just okay. It, they have the they have not moved the sticks yet. Second down. Yeah, I don't replay in the down. That that makes sense, but I don't. A personal foul is a personal foul. That should be a 15-yard automatic. Okay, second down. I yeah, I would have almost assumed. I always thought a personal foul is automatic first down. But it becomes second or third here. I think they're going to re-talk about this. You can't give a 15-yard penalty without a first down being handed. Well, they had the ball on the 48. They lost eight on the first play. Okay. Then they had a penalty that moved them back to the 35. And they just moved it to third down. It was sec on second down was the incomplete pass. I think it was a dead ball foul. Maybe that's why it's not automatic, because if the ball was down and he got hit, I. I'm not real sure it's third down and eight from the 50. And we'll go with that as Cooper Roberts is going to get sacked by 14 or 34. 
And that is 34, John Wessner on the quarterback sack. So he moves it back in you know, just inside about the 49 on the sack and a fourth down. So what a freaky possession there following, you know, the whole thing that led up to Waynesfield getting the ball and then doing really nothing with some penalties and now Layman almost blocked this the last time. So timeout, Layman Catholic. So with 949 left in the second quarter, we'll take a timeout with them. You're watching high school football on NK Telco Sports. At First National Bank, we are working hard to make your life a little easier. With products like Card Valet, an app allowing you to control your cards with real-time notifications, transaction restrictions, and spending limits. The ability to access your money through 55,000 all-point ATMs across the country, surcharge free. Live customer support when you need it. And online and mobile banking, allowing you to gain access to your financial information wherever and whenever you like. First National Bank, making your life a little easier. Welcome back here. It's fourth down to nine as the Tigers are lining up to punt. Layman Catholic has taken their third time out of the half. Coach Richard Roll wants to make sure everybody's on the same page here as getting ready to punt for the Tigers. Bertini fell back to return as well. So two men back. So as Matt said, Layman nearly blocked the last one, and that one was straight up in the air by Josh oh. Kirchner. It takes a neutral bounce, and it will stop at the 27. And that is where, finally, this will be the first offensive snap taken of the second quarter, just 9.39 to go. But I guess it seemed like we would played more of it. So um, this will be the first offensive snap. Well, you know, Jeff, we talked Cavaliers. about before this game started that this could be a high scoring affair, but it has really just been a, a, a mucky, it's been a, a mucky awkward, week eight. Yeah, awkward, yeah, awkward start to this is right. And I thought maybe with the kind of the decent good weather conditions and uh, teams have put some points up on the board throughout the season that it would be kind of a shootout so far. Not so much as I think as Bertini gets up to the 30. That is the first positive play of offense for Lehman. So there they got something to build on three yard gain. Now they're going to need to put some of those together. Try to move the chains. I had I don't think they've had a first down. They yet. have not got so a first down as yeah, of yet with a negative yard. Yes, you're right. And Waynesfield only has a total of four. So Bertini in the backfield, three receivers to the right, one to the left. Looking to run immediately off the snap, and he is going to get nowhere. A host of Tigers will be a loss of three from the 49 back, or back from the um, 30, I should say, down to the 27. Well, I guess we could just say that both teams' defenses are playing phenomenal. Yes, we'll, get, um, we'll, we'll go with that. That's one kind of good thing we've seen tonight on both teams is their defense has been solid. You know what? I said that wrong. Number 12 was Barhorse. I th thought he took the direct snap last series or last play. Now number three, Bertini back. Saying 51, Caleb Gary, the nose guard, he has not let anybody pass him. I mean, he's now he's getting double teamed. Bertini escapes a stack and will be met. And again, team sack. I think number 32, Kyle Searson will ultimately get credit for it, but Boy, Bertini under pressure, good pursuit by the Tigers ball. Goes back to the 22, another loss of play, or yards, Five Matt, and yards. another punt. So This kind of reminds me of the Ohio State-Michigan game way back when it was snowing, and they just kept punting the ball back and forth. Bar Let's see if they can't do that here. Six-foot senior will wait the snap. And the snap comes from Brendan O'Leary and a good foot. It takes a Cavalier hop and that will go down near and inside to 25, 24, 23, 22 and a half. So I think Lehman just may have given a gift away. That ball bounced oddly. I don't know if we got a replay on that. It nearly hit him. I thought didn't I it looked like it hit his foot, but so didn't lip it is what we're being told from the truck. So Tigers will take over 724 to go here in the second quarter. As the Tigers who had a trick play to get their only points of the game have been in the red zone a couple times. They come away with points on the second opportunity. 
last series <coughs> was a mess following a, another turnover, the second turnover of the game for the Cavaliers, but did nothing in that series of offense and punted it back and have another chance here at it at first down 10 from the 23. A nice pursuit and tackle by 52. It's going to be a loss of five. Seth Peoples, a senior defensive lineman with the tackle for loss. As Last Matt said, it puts him back to the 18-yard line. Last Second. five runs for Waynesfield Goshen. One for zero, one for zero, one for negative eight, one for negative one, one for negative five. Last five runs, nothing. That's all in the red. Those all are, in the those, red. Those are good golf numbers, maybe. As we're going negative, but uh, right now the offense needs to find something positive. First, second down, 15. Pass caught by Campbell. And he gets out to the 24. So they get some of that back just past the original line of scrimmage as Cooper Roberts completes it to Leighton Campbell. And it brings up an important now third down and long. So Again, you need something here. The Tigers are trying to move the chains. The Cavaliers need a stop, try to get the ball back, get something started <coughs> offensively here before half as we are approaching the midway point of the second 12-minute quarter. I mean, the best thing, if you're layman at this point and you go into the locker room and you're only down by seven, considering how bad the first half has been, despite everything you've done to make it the other way, Play you cannot complain. Down to one, okay, they did not get it off or actually false start maybe. I thought it was maybe delayed game, but false start, we'll put it back to the 19 and another break for the defense here for the Cavaliers. You said if they can get a stop here, get the ball back and right now should probably feel fortunate. They're only down by one score and they've had some miscues and See, I don't know if I would say they're fortunate. Their defense is playing pretty sound. I mean, they're, they're one turnover away from changing this and making it a new game. I mean, so, I mean, you look at the offensive numbers, there has only been one plus yardage play. So you're gonna have to depend on your defense and technically you can score more ways on defense than you can offense. Cooper Roberts, nice touch pass intended for number five, Leighton Campbell broken up, I believe by number 12, Barhorst. Yeah, Barhorst looked like he was gonna bring it in. That was nice, nice change to defense for the Waynesfield player to knock it down. Okay, so the defense <laughs> for the Cavaliers holds. The Tigers are gonna to have to get a good foot on the ball by number 52. Layman's getting them all up on the line. We'll see if they'll go for the block this time. Joshua. Kirchner gets it away and fielding it and oh, off no. of his hands at the 46, 47 yard line was Bertini. He's able to get it. So another hold your breath act, if you will, but excellent field position now for the Cavaliers at the 47 yard line. Take another look at it here as Bertini, a sure handed running back and defensive back just had it right go through his hands and alertly falling on it before Evan Miller, who has the game's only touchdown catch, yeah, very can recover it. So first down, 10 for the Cavaliers. Five minutes, 33 seconds to go in the first half. Layman just needs to think small here. Small Bertini games. Bertini hands off to Barhorst. And Barhorst goes off right side for about two yards. So from the 47 down to the 45. <coughs> Last five runs for Lehman, negative seven yards, a three yard gain, negative three, negative five, and now a two. So finally got their second offensive play going the right way. See if they can't build off this. Looking for their first first down, 507 left on the thing first clock. Again, Bertini deploys three to the right and they do get a neutral zone infraction. So I think it's going to be encroachment on defense. They broke the neutral zone. I'll get five yards penalty yards for the Cavaliers to the 40. So now that brings up a very much manageable second down and four. They've not had many of those opportunities tonight. They've usually been in third and longs and second and longs, third and longs, but uh, much more achievable here. Second down and four from the 41 yard line. It starts with one first down. If Lamy can get that, we'll see if they can't start tying them together. 
They get a pass out to the right side and with the catch on the far side. It's a nice little positive play. Tyler Salmon with the catch and more importantly, a first down. I'm Look. sorry, just short of the first down. Jailhouse screen. So that was uh, just ruled out of bounds. Ball resting on the 38. I thought he had not real sure here. Yeah, I thought he was right on top of it, but they're saying, I think I would ask for a measurement if I was the coach at this point. And they're going to bring him out. So four minutes, 33 seconds to go. Pause in the action right now as they will measure. And um, we'll get a good look at it here as they will bring the chains out. You know, this is the big disadvantage when you are a uh, shotgun team. If you're used to having a center under center, I mean, it's not that hard to push for a quarter of a yard. Because if they don't have it, they're they're less. I mean, they're inches away. And the chain is stretched and will wait. First down. So on that pass completion to Salman, I believe it was Tyler with the reception. They get their first first down of the game at the 433 mark. And a new set of downs as the Cavaliers have not scored. They didn't score at all last game. They were held scoreless here in the first quarter. So their offense has really struggled yeah, at least the past quarters. five five quarters for sure. Yeah, and basically this one as well. The second quarter, not much doing so far, although this drive has they've eliminated the negative plays. Drew Barhorst, a three yard pickup. So like I said, doesn't seem like much all the time, but it's it definitely beats going backwards. They get the ball just over the 35, call it the 34. I like the way they're using the entire time uh, time clock. They're not gonna leave much on there if they keep methodically just bringing it down the field. So second down eight ball on the 34. We got four in the backfield right now. And Bertini quickly down the right sideline and overthrown looking for Brendan O'Leary. That was a quick hitter as they were hoping to catch maybe the Tigers a little bit of a, a sleep, let O'Leary's speed maybe get by the DB. And you know, at least the pass thrown in the right spot where only hopefully the Layman Catholic Cavalier receiver could get it, but it was well over his head. That stops the clock at 348 and brings up third down and eight. So again, I think we're in two down territory for the Cavaliers. They don't need all eight on this, but want to get some positive yards here to make the next down fourth and short. As Bertini is tackled short of the first down. And on that stop was Jacob Osberger. And they get it from the 34 down to the 32. So fourth down and four, six. I guess fourth down and six. If you look at their jailhouse screen that they have open wherever they have the trips at, uh, Leighton Campbell, he is out of position, number five. So if you can get that ball to number one and the other two blockers take it, he only has to beat one player for the yards. I think that's where Lehman should be looking. Bertini in the backfield with Barhorse. Bertini keeps it. Open receiver far side is Brendan O'Leary. Pass and catch, ball down to the 20. That's another first down, a gain of about 12. So the second first down of the half, all on this drive, keeps the Cavaliers alive as they will move the chains and put the Cavaliers in the red zone right at the 20 yard line. So they go opposite the triples and basically pick on the one-on-one -on -one combination on top of your screen with uh, Brendan O'Leary with the reception. Well, I just don't like, well, if you watch Campbell, that's who I've been focusing on here. He, his first steps are in. So you have the mismatch and, and that's an interception. A, they were looking for Salman Nathan and it's well read and stepping right into Evan Miller. I believe he was not only scored the game's first touchdown, but how's the an interception here? Well, ready, jump the route if you will. I think he, Anticipated, good anticipation by Number four. Evan Miller, six foot senior. Those seniors were freshmen when Coach Wireman came aboard. They've struggled through an 0 win season, a two win season, a five and five last year, and currently five and two. So they're 
they've stuck through it and um, hoping to build upon this, their fourth season with Coach Wireman. That's a from big the, hole. So the ball moves from the 35 out across the 40 to the 43 yard line. Nice pickup on first down. So good chunk yards there. Second down short. Clock running as we approach two minutes, 30 seconds until halftime. And if I'm right, Lehman had the ball to start the game. So if Tigers of Waynesfield can score, they're gonna double dip if they don't leave a lot of clock time for the Cavaliers as a short gain there will bring up third and one. John Edwards on the stop. Waynesville Goshen just looking for their fifth first down. Comfortable lead seven nothing here in this defensive battle between these two teams. Two minutes to go as clock continues to move. Yeah, and I really thought as we talked briefly before the game, <coughs> both teams were shut out last week under some poor weather conditions and both teams have put some points up on the board so far in other games and just nothing so far tonight as Rickle stopped right at the line of scrimmage, maybe a loss of a yard. And they came out in the wing tee there. Edwards, again, number 54, Lehman Catholic in on the stop. So no gain on that attempt. Fourth down two. Would think that the Tigers, if my math is right here, it's fourth down two. They appear that they're going to go for it. With 118, I don't think I would do that. I think I'd just punt it away and go be happy you're going in with a lead. Okay, so chance here for the Cavaliers to make a defensive stop. Unless they're going to try to draw them offside and play clock down to 3-2. They will take a timeout instead to avoid the penalty. We'll take a timeout with a one minute, four seconds left in the half. You're watching high school football here on NK Telco Sports. Wegner's IGA have been servicing their communities for more than 90 years, spanning three generations. Wegner's founded their business on two basic principles, excellent customer service and quality products. Visit all our locations and experience the finest selection of deli, fresh meats, and a variety of beverage choices. While there, don't forget to check out our vast selection of fresh coffee beans, produce, dairy, and bakery items. Visit Wegner's today in Minster, Fort Laramie, and New Bremen. Welcome back again as we approach the final minute four and four seconds is going back for his, I think third punt, fourth punt will be number 52, Joshua Kirchner. And he's gonna, again, he's kind of a slow release if you will Very get the ball slow, away. Very slow, slow approach. We'll see once if the Cavaliers can get some pressure on and the he's Tigers offensive line is gonna have to, or punt formation have to protect. Good end over end kick. It'll bounce and take kind of a neutral bounce again and downing it as number 20 for the Tigers. And that's where the Cavaliers will take over with just under a minute to go at the 24 yard line. NK Telco Sports and its sponsors are pleased to bring you replays of high school football on NK Telco Channel 3 or in HD on Channel 503. Saturday, October 18th at 11 p.m. and Sunday, October 20th at 12 p.m. You can also watch games on demand on NK Telco Sports Facebook page and at nktelco.com. Thank you again to those. Well, thanks for the sponsors allow us to bring you this action tonight and um, Matt Everidge and Jeff Henson here tonight with this NWCC matchup as that pass is intercepted. And still on his feet is number 13, Cole Slagle, and he will go out of bounds inside the 20. And make sure there's no penalties. I don't see any, and that will be intercepted. A nice return, take another look at it. As the pass a bit overthrown, and Slagle there to play receiver. We're going back to live now. Trying to and there is up. a penalty being called. After the return. interception, so it will still be Waynesfield's ball, I believe. And where did the penalty happen? We'll see once there. Everyone's marking, walking back towards midfield, so it must have been almost after the right after quick, the catch. Yeah, quickly after the catch. So here's our replay. Watch the throw here from Bertini. A little bit. Well, we apologize for that. The uh, uh, replay just isn't quite coming turnover, out. Another turnover, though, for. 
the Cavaliers. And That's the uh, fourth one in the back to back passes now with interceptions for Lehman Catholic. So a bad break for the Cavaliers. The I mean, Tigers of Waynesfield will take over on a 47. You almost have to go deep at this point. I mean, if you're if they're going to give you the opportunity, you got to try. Roberts down the field, five versus five, and it's broken up as Campbell and O'Leary, the two gentlemen with the five under jerseys battling for the football, and it falls incomplete, incomplete pass. Evan it, Miller was wide open. So that will stop the clock with 38 seconds left. And timeout situation, Waynesfield does have two timeouts, so if you will, they can use the whole field. The clock does stop in high school football on first downs. We'll see once what they do here on second and 10 from the 47. Ball is snap. Roberts downfield again, looking for number five, intercepted at the 30 yard line by number 12, Drew Barhorse. So Drew Barhorse, as the pass was a little bit overthrown, Matt Barhorse read it well, made sure he caught it. And uh, another turnover, I should say, the turnover gives it right back. Take Here's another look. replay, drops back, comes right across the middle, overshot his receiver and picked up. Nice little gain of two. Looks like they're going to go in victory formation and just down it out for the first half here. No timeouts left and probably a good idea. You don't want to have a, another mistake. Uh, they dodged a bullet this time with the last interception. And, and smart move on Goshen's part. They're calling timeout. Clock I thought running. they called timeout. And no timeout signal has been made yet. The Tigers of Waynesville do have two timeouts left. I think both teams... I think are content and they begin to walk off. The clock is at 10 seconds and continues to run. So after two 12 minute quarters of action, um, a defensive battle here, a little sloppy first half by both teams, but a trick play as the only points of the game so far as Rickle hits Miller on a four yard touchdown in the second quarter. And that's how we stand right now as we head into halftime here at Sydney Memorial Stadium. We'll be back with second half action here on NK Telco Sports. Together, we are family, working safely for our loved ones. We are problem solvers who challenge the status quo and drive improvement. We care about our customer relationships. We stay true to our values, caring and respecting one another. We embrace change as we journey through our career. We are Precision Strip, the world's leading processor of rolled steel and aluminum. Precision Strip, doing the exceptional. Trust us. NK Telco, a small town company with a big focus on customer service. We build business the old fashioned way. Trust us to be your internet provider. Trust us to help you find the right cable package for your viewing needs. Trust us to answer your questions any time of the day. Trust NK Telco to be on call. Deliver and make sure your service is tailored to meet your needs. We serve commercial and residential customers to meet their communication needs. Trust us at NK Telco. Trust us! At CAPT, we use Hometown Opportunity to make sure that when we have a position open within the facility, it gets put on the website. We've really been excited to see how that has grown so much over the last several years. If anyone is looking for a job, it's the, it's the best place to go. We really want to do whatever we can to get folks that are from this community back to this area. I would recommend any manufacturing company that they take a look at it. It's a very good benefit for companies at no cost. It's halftime here at Sydney Memorial Stadium. Right now, the Tigers of Waynesfield on top seven to zero with our first half stats. Here is Matt Everidge. All right, we'll look at the halftime stats for both teams. Bringing that up, it's gonna be uh, for Lehman, they was three of 10 for 15 yards passing. Um, on the running, they was nine rushes for a negative seven yards. Along with, so total yards is negative seven, or is eight yards. Um, completion percentage was three for 10, and the turnovers were four, two fumbles, two interceptions. On the flip side for Waynesville Goshen, they scored seven points on a total of 78 yards, 21 rushing yards on, or I'm sorry, 47 rushing yards on 21 attempts. 
And they have a total of 31 passing yards, throwing five for 11 on their completion and attempts with only one turnover and interception. So Jeff, we've basically seen a heck of a defensive game and that, that's the way you got to look at it. But for Lehman, you're only down by seven with everything that you did wrong. Yeah, I mean, they could have easily been trailing a lot more and um, should feel fortunate for the Tigers. Probably feel like he should have had some more points on the board. They um, did have a drive, got down in the red zone, could not convert, had some penalties that pushed them back. And then the lone drive they did get into the red zone. It was a trick play, so to speak, a pitch to Joel Rickle, who then hit Evan Miller on kind of a, like you called a push pass or a, 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 a shove it was he, he got rid of it Evan Miller was able to catch it and that was at the 11 30 mark in the second quarter and that's really the only scoring threat we've had and we've had a lot of uh, weird turnovers if you will some um, well no I went down to the sloppy concessions play and I went down to the concessions at halftime and you could hear coach roll all the way on the outside over by the concession stand. So I expect Lehman to come out with a little bit of fire underneath them. Well, big game as we talked about. Neither team wants to lose it this way. And, you know, each team wants to get try to get a big win tonight. Both these teams still vying for the playoffs here. We're week eight of high school football and two league rivals going at it. And we start the second half with a return by Isaiah Sanders, number two. He gets it out to the across the 30, give him the 31. And that is where Waynesfield will start under their fourth year head coach, Shane Wireman. Mentioned earlier, he came in when these now seniors were freshmen and they suffered through some tough years and have battled back, got to 500 last year, five and five. And right now, five and two overall, two and two in the NWCC sitting eighth in the computer point standing. So having a nice turnaround here for the division seven small school if you will, and um, looking to come on the road here. And, and a loss here for Lehman Cavaliers probably is gonna knock them out. They need to win out and get some help, probably some teams above them to lose. And that's out of their control right now for, is it for the Cavaliers. They need to take care of business here and uh, try to turn this thing around. Right now, Searson off the right side. He lumbles, lumbers across the 40 to about the 41. So again, a good start out across the 40 by Searson and him and Joel Rickle have been kind of a one-two combination. Rickle a little bit smaller, more fleet of foot. Searson has been giving me the ball and run some people over and he keeps his leg moving and it takes a number of defenders to bring him down. Absolutely, picked up seven there on that run. I know by my coach from high school, he always told us three or four plays make the difference in a game and that's what we're away from here is just three or four big plays well, that can make every time as much as I talk about Searson overrunning people a uh, host of layman Catholic Cavaliers on the stop for no game. So it brings up third and two at the 41. If you're just joining a score seven nothing here at Sydney Memorial Stadium. Now here's a huge play for the defense. They've been pretty good all night. The Cavaliers, they bent a little bit, haven't broken too much, but they can get a stop here on third down. You would expect the Tigers to punt it away and give that offense a chance to come out and make some plays. They've been scoreless now for at least six straight quarters. Cooper Roberts airs it out, open receiver, pass, catch, number five, Leighton Campbell, and a big first down completion for the Tigers. They move it from the 41. Near midfield, yards. across midfield to the 48 yard line. Take another look at it here, or I'm sorry, as they huddle up there. Nice, well thrown ball, and that's a first down for the Tigers. Yeah, here's the replay. He just draws back, and there is just no pressure at all. Wide open receiver, and he extends the play yards after catch. So, first down keeps the chains moving for the Tigers, and there's the, I think that's the first counter we've seen the entire game, so. And Rickle nearly lost some yards. He's able to break an arm tackle, gain a yard. So a short gain there, as you mentioned, and a penalty. So I missed that, Matt, as there's laundry on the field and they will mark it off. It's against the defense, five yard penalty. So from the 47 down to the 42 yard line. 
Not quite sure what they called there. It must have I been offsides. As well. Well, I, they gave him five and kept it first down, so. Yeah, so I'm not. Hands in the face would be the only other five yard penalty. First down and five. And Roberts again, open receiver on this near side. Evan Miller, stutter steps, stiff arms, and goes forward. And another penalty is tossed. We'll see once here what the call is. As Miller runs out of bounds near the 25 yard line, face mask is going to be called on the offense. I think they'll get Miller as he kind of used a stiff arm. But I think he'll get credit. We'll see once this pushes it back. We'll look at the guy in the white hat and see once what he's. Another call on the face mask from the 27 yard line, I think. So it was first and five. Now make it. They'll move it back from the unofficial, what was the line of scrimmage, back a couple more yards. So penalty pushes it back to the 43 yard line. And we can erase that 14 yard completion. So yeah, it, you know, unless they I've never seen an it. offensive player called for well, that. Well, in the NFL, I always wonder those, those receivers will put a stiff arm and grab the face mask, and I, evidently that's legal, but if you're a defensive player and you just touch a face mask, it's a foul. I'm not real sure. Maybe they felt he pulled down, but that'll give the ball back. And they capitalize, though, and they do get a nice completion of Leighton Campbell, and he He's will still going. get down the sideline, 43 yard. Pass and catch, Roberts to Campbell. So they take advantage of the opportunity and get a nice pass on the left side and good speed by Campbell and take Here's another look at it here. Replay just swung it out to the flat and hesitated, made the defender stumble a little bit and he just brings it around with the speed. Puts them up 13-0 and 9.39 left in the third. Extra point coming. Ryder Siebenek, the place kicker, will be held by Evan Miller. And the kick is no good. So the score remains 13-0 with 9.39 left. We'll take a short break and come back with more football here on NK Telco Sports. At Minster Bank, we understand that life can get hectic. That's why when it comes to your banking, we offer the services that make your life simpler with tools like person-to-person -person payments, pop money, mobile and online banking, and bill pay. But most of all, Minster Bank is a supportive member of your community with personal relationships and customer service that reach outside of our branches. Minster Bank, helping people achieve financial success. The Waynesfield Tigers on top now 13 to zero as they capitalize on their first possession, the only possession here in the second half. And they take it down the field in a big home run play, Matt. Another pass completion to that short side or to the short receiver. And then in this case, Campbell just outruns the defense. Yeah, six plays, three passing, three rushing for 71 yards total and takes the score 13 nothing. Waynesfield Goshen leading the Layman Catholic. I mean, that. With what we've seen from the first half, and this is going to be Layman's first uh, attempt at the ball here in the second, that could be a nail in the coffin all four early here in the third quarter. Well, the offense definitely is going to have to get something moving. They are not going to, if you will, come back with the type of effort or the performance they've done so far. And it starts with a good run back by Barhorst and a little bit of life. There's a penalty from way back. We'll see once if this will tack it on to the play, although the Tigers of Waynesfield are clapping. Right now the ball's on the 45. We'll see where it, following the yellow flag, where it ends up. It seems like when either team gets a little bit of momentum, they just shoot themselves in the foot and Lehman looks like they're backing up. So it would have had it on the 45. Call on a hold. He's done that a couple of times. I actually think it's, that's his personal foul. I mean, it looks like a holding. He's done that even on the face yeah, mask. That was 15 yards. That's so exactly I think it was what a he gave personal him. foul of some sort, and that pushes it back to the 30. So, you know, could have had it on the 45. They start on the 30. Work to do for the Cavaliers. The offense 
I truly believe bubble screens is, is the key to this their comeback here. They will keep it on the ground and across the 35 to the 36 goes Drew Barhorst. That was a generous spot there. His knee went down at about the 34. They're going to give him the 36. So Second nice down run. and four positive yards. You aren't going to get it all back in one series, but the offense needs to get some rhythm, some continuity, and maybe some confidence. Again, it's been six quarters for sure since they've dented the end zone. And that one falls incomplete. And speaking of scoring points, other than the shutout last week, in the games previous, they scored, they scored 43 in a win against Elgin, 42 in a win against Ridgemont, 27 against Riverside, 20 in a loss to Graham, and 17 in a loss to Miami East, and open up the season with a shutout loss to a very good Fort Recovery team, but have been able at times to put some points on the board. Just right now, not in rhythm. Third down, five clock, right at nine minutes. And that one is intercepted, pick six into the end zone will be Blake Barnes. So the interception return of about 26 yards and well read by Barnes. He stepped right into the passing lane, read it well, caught it. No one was going to catch him. We've got a nice crowd of Waynesfield players right here in front so of us. Here we go, taking a look at it on the outside and just reading it nicely and anticipating it. And Barnes, a 5'10 sophomore, back-to-back -to -back touchdowns here within about a minute of action. And that PAT is blocked, so the score now stays at 19. There's another penalty. I think it's going to be on. Looks like it's going to be a dead ball as well. He's looking back at the Waynesfield coach. So we'll take a second here and let them sort things out. I mean, we've had odd plays. We might as well have odd penalties as well. Running into the kicker is the call. Five-yard penalty, so. Half the distance to the goal. Another try, and this is where Waynesfield might go for two to take it up by three scores. 21. We'll see once what Coach Wireman li likes to do here. As Matt said, it'll be inside. Offense is coming the, back out. And moving from what, the two and a half down to the just outside the one. All righty, so they will try for two following the penalty, try to make it a, a three score. A traditional three score yep, game. 21 point mark, but uh, boy, tough break for the Cavaliers as they got the good solid block of the PAT, but uh, the penalty gives the Tigers a new look here and chance for two. Cooper Roberts, direct run up the middle, and he crosses the goal line. Two-point conversion is good. The score now 21 to zero. We'll take a break with 8.52 to go in the third quarter. You're watching high school football on NK Telco Sports. Here's the thing. If you're the kind of guy who eats, sleeps, and breathes farming, who gets up at dawn, determined to get the best crop and the best yield, why surrender to the mercy of the water table? Cy Schwiedemann Incorporated can lower your water table to an average of two to three feet below the surface, allowing you to grow stronger, healthier plants that root deeper, that are more resilient to the elements, that enable longer growing seasons, and can produce higher results in the fields and in your pocket. Trust CSI, your drainage expert since 1946. Welcome back here. Two quick touchdowns by the Waynesfield Tigers, and they have opened up this game now 21, although the board still says 19. Matt, did he not score the two? Uh, I think they took it away from him. They haven't put the points on the board. So just like everything else tonight, I'm, I almost feel like we're on Halloween night or something. So, so I thought that uh, Bartini, or not Bartini, that uh, Roberts had got in. Right now it's 19 to zero on the scoreboard. It was signaled as a touchdown on the replay here. It looked like he got in right there, but the ball was on the outside of the, uh, in the okay. left hand, so it, he may not have got in. My but. apologies, 19 to zero. And work to do for the Cavaliers. They have not had a, not a good series of plays here. The last one on pick six, 
their last couple possessions in the first half, a couple interceptions. Two fumbles, it's, five turnovers they, total. They've only had one drive that they've generated any first down, so that was in the second quarter, but. And that was only one first down that they got the total first two. half. They got two back in that drive that got it down to the 20 before it was intercepted, and here we go again, Matt. Uh, kickoff out of bounds, and. Went out the 19, we saw this in the first half. It took him three kickoffs to finally get one in play, and that was a fumble or a muffed handle by the Cavaliers. It gave the ball back to the Tigers. Hmm. So no time off the clock, still sitting at 8.52 in the third. And I am now correct. It is 21 to zero. As Cooper Roberts' two-point conversion is credited on the scoreboard, 21 to zero. Penalty moves it back to the 30. Five. Not real sure. I'm just curious. You know what the is he just miss hitting the football when he kicks it, or is it by design or trying to, you know, they're trying to obviously maybe kick it to the side to shorten the field. But uh, this is the third or fourth time now that. Well, it looks had, like a regular cleat that he's wearing. It's not even a kicking shoe. So that's what I'm kind well, of finding. The, the line strange. drive and. Picked up by Tyler Salmon, and he will down it near the 40, and that's where they will begin their second drive. Their first series resulted in a pick six by Barnes. Not for sure if Barnes ran that back about 26 yards, I think. I don't recall the distance. I think it was around 25, 26 yards. But uh, work to do for the, the Cavaliers. R.J. Bertini, number three, your quarterback. Senior will take the snap. Directly up the middle goes Barhorst, Drew Barhorst, and he gets across the 44. So they've already gained 10 yards rushing this half. Uh, they're at negative seven for the first half, so already got positives going on the ground. They might want to keep with that. Back under center for a second and six. Clock moving, eight minutes, 25 seconds to go in the third quarter. Barhorse will keep the handoff. First down yards across midfield stripe down to the 46-yard line. So First down. Longest run of the game for 11 yards. Nice burst right up the middle. More importantly, the first down, Matt, keeps the, the chains, a new set of downs. As hobbling off the field is wide receiver Tyler Salman, number 28. So he is a little dinged up. He will miss this play as two receivers on each side for the Cavaliers and nice maneuverability by R.J. Bertini and he scampers forward for nine, maybe 10, down to the 35, so back-to-back -back chunk yards. Two first downs in a row. Lehman got something rolling. Again, you can't get all of these scores at once, but still plenty of time. They're you know, the defense has done a decent job. It's some, the pick six was a quick score that has them down now by three touchdowns. So touchdown here would kind of minimize that lead as there's a penalty flag on the snap as running out of bounds is Barhorse after a short game. We'll take a look at the call if it was a defensive penalty. Weather continues to get colder down to about 40. Uh, six degrees now. I think it was a warning. It was not a, they threw the flag, so a sideline warning maybe. So give them a two yard pickup on the rush attempt. So the ball down on the 33 on that carry by Drew Barhorst. Bertini hands off again to Barhorst this time. Tackled at the line of scrimmage. And Joel Rickle on the stop again, short yard gain or none at all. The ball stays at the 33 and becomes third down and long. This will be the ninth play in the second half for Lehman. Coach Richard Roll is third. And that's going to be season. offsides. We'll take that penalty, and if they broke the neutral zone, appears that they did. Add five yards forward, and that takes it down to the 28. So penalty helps here. Coach Richard Roll in his 13th season. The Cavaliers have been to the playoffs six straight seasons. 
in the NWCC. So they've been a, it's common for them, if you will, to get to week 11. They need to win this game tonight to keep them in that contention to make it a seventh straight and trying to put together a drive here that actually looks decent with not many mistakes. They lumber forward for a first down. So it's three in a row for Lehman. Ball on the 25. And with each of these first downs, that stops the clock. So it starts again once they get it set. So it does, not that you have to play maybe in hurry up yet, but keep that in mind though, as we wind down here the midway through the third quarter. As up the middle for a couple, maybe give him three, goes number 12, Drew Barhorse, down to the 22. I mean, Lehman very fortunate that they're not on a running clock already with Waynesfield having a couple other opportunities to score and just couldn't pull through. So everything they have right now is a gift. They just need to focus and come back seven at a time. The score here definitely would help the confidence and offense has been struggling here for a bit for the Cavaliers. Martini keeps, he's being pursued. He'll look to throw it away. Open receiver, I should say, down and into the end zone. Number four, Nathan Salman. 22-yard pass and catch. Bertini to Nathan Salman. It looked like maybe he was just trying to get rid of it, being pressured, but yeah, had the awareness. Replay. Tough RPO. throw, tough throw going against your body. Wide open receiver is number four, Nathan Salman. So yeah. using the run pass offense, but it looks like there might be a penalty on the field. I missed there that, is. so wipe that out. Good eyes, Matt, I did not see the penalty. They're going to call a hold. Tough break for the Cavaliers. So now going to be second and 14. So wipe out the, the touchdown of 22 yards. That can be a heartbreaker for the team at this point. So we'll reset it. Second, and now they're outside the system, you know, behind the, the, the first marker. So second and 14 from the 28. And that gets it back to the original line of scrimmage. I just don't know if you have enough time to do this type of comeback, though, with the run. Each team seems like when they have the ball, they take about three to four minutes off the clock before they punt away. I don't, I, I get it. I, I don't know. I think there's still time. I mean, there's, it's not, you almost, I think, can play a little bit of speed up just to keep the rhythm going. You've got a nice drive going here. Let's keep it rolling. Uh, but uh, they've, Kind of stayed about consistent, a little deliberate. Bertini's pass misses one receiver, but picked up by number five, Brendan O'Leary. So pass and catch as receiving it was Brendan O'Leary. Takes it down from the 26 yard line inside the five down to the two. Getting 24 yards on that reception. It looked like Nathan Solomon was maybe the receiver, but here's see, the replay. Just goes right past the one into the belly of number five and then he goes a couple tackles and so first down and goal five minutes five seconds clock running Cavaliers looking to score for, again for the first time in a while they were held shut out last week in a 21 nothing loss too hard and northern Bertini Hands off, and I think in for the rushing touchdown goes number 12, Andrew Barhorse. And the touchdown run puts the Cavaliers on the board. So much needed points for the Cavaliers. Had a touchdown taken away on a penalty, bounce back and score this time on a two yard rushing attempt by Drew Barhorst. It was a nice job of the lineman pulling for the trap play there. Nice little 6-1 trap. Trapped the one hole and got him in. Evan Potts, number 17, left-footed kicker. Splits the uprights with 4.45 to go. The score now 21 for Waynesfield, 7 for Lehman Catholic. We'll take a break and come back with more high school football on NK Telco Sports. At Joint Township District Memorial Hospital, your comfort and care is our number one priority. Our surgical nerve blocks are a great way to reduce pain and can be used for arm, shoulder, hip, knee, ankle, and foot surgeries. 
The nerve blocks decrease the stress of surgery on your body, requires less anesthesia and pain medications, and in many cases can offer relief for several days. Visit GrandLakeHealth.org for details on all of our services. Well, big score for the Cavaliers of Lehman, Matt. A much needed score. Um, still find ourselves down by two touchdowns, but now that defense you know, can go out with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. They can get a stop here, give the ball back to the offense. A decent drive, a lot of it on the ground, but um, had some passing in there as well, but most of it on the ground. Yeah, hopefully Lehman here is smart, just kicks it away. I wouldn't be worried about an onside kick or anything like that leading in. But during the break there, we was talking, it's a big night for a local kid here um, playing Isaiah in a Bowers, big game. Isaiah Bauer, um, Bowser playing at Sydney Public School last year, playing for Northwestern, and they are playing a rare Friday night game against Ohio State Buckeyes tonight in Evanston, Northwestern, or North Evanston, Illinois. So big uh, local player making it big time playing uh, on a big stage, had a great freshman campaign. Last year got dinged up a little bit. This year is trying to bounce back. Northwestern struggling a bit. But uh, congratulations to him. Good luck to him and his efforts against the Ohio State Buckeyes tonight. So, yeah, pretty amazing how the uh, support from this town got together last year for the game. I guess a lot of them traveled over to Indiana for the big game and just a lot of support so, coming Illinois out here. For Northwestern, yeah. Yes. Yep, well, so. I think they played Indy or in the uh, championship or something. You're right. And there's a right, lot right. of people gotcha. traveling. For the Big Ten championship yes. game, yes. You're right. Yeah, because he didn't, I think he filled in, the player in front of him got hurt last year, and then he had the opportunity and took advantage of it. And then this year he gets dinged up a little bit. So you know, we are blessed with talented football players all around us down here in, in West Central Ohio. It's something we were a little spoiled. Boy, Searson takes the handoff around the left side. Kyle Searson, a 200 pound senior. A good statement there on first down as, uh, you know, you think. Cavaliers get a touchdown. Defense, come on, guys, let's get four and a uh, three and out, and bam, Searson with a nice 11 yard run for first down and moves them, you know, gives them a little bit of breathing room, but a big run on first down. And yeah, every, every one of the big plays, though, you hurry up and you look at the field and scan it just to make sure a flag hasn't been yes. thrown. I mean, it's a it's been a laundry heavy game, just and it's the small mistakes that, that keeps killing these drives for these teams. Cooper Roberts, open receiver, underthrown. I think that ball skipped to the ground. Intended receiver was Cole Slagle. Flag on the field. And they're pointing towards the Lehman defense. And, well, they're not the, the officials, are they? And so the man of stripes will. I thought he pointed towards the offense, so. I believe he did. I think that's the second sideline. So a five yard penalty on the sideline for Lehman. So it moves it back to the 26. And again, here they put themselves behind the numbers. Yeah, behind the chain. Same thing that Sydney did. So we'll see once here what uh, they reset the play clock to 25. And on the whistle, it winds. The game clock still now winding at 420 and counting. There's a nice burst outside by number three. And Joel he's still Ripper. going. And he will be tackled across the 50, uh, given the 43 of Lehman. So from the 26 out to the 43 of Lehman Catholic, good run by Joel Rickle. So a nice 29 yard run. Take another look at it here, Matt. Again, good burst of speed. He wasn't touched, I don't think, at all until he was downfield a bit. and. Uh, you know, two hand tap, he's good until there. So pretty good speed and, and that was a nice job by number 89, who's Noah Young of not grabbing the face mask. He went up high on him, but just grabbed a shoulder or a shoulder pad and rode that out. So nice job of playing some clean ball there. Well, a good answer though by the Tigers. They've come out when you think Lehman was gonna come out and you know, the defense has been playing pretty good tonight and get a good stop, but here they get a, a tackle for loss. Take them back too. So a good defensive play there, negative yards. Well, they took them back three on that one. So gonna be third and third or second and 13. 
Here's a time that the defense has given up some big runs. They can get a couple stops here. Of course, now field position has been shifted. Uh, and they're inside of Lehman territory as Cooper Roberts takes the low snap being pursued. Gets rid of it as he is hit by a couple Cavaliers. 75, one of them was Connor Stewart. And also number five, Brendan O'Leary in on the pressure. I'm sorry, number six, I believe it was number six. Copsey. Nathan Copsey. So those two guys forced the incomplete pass. And we've seen Copsey help the quarterback up after that hit. You know, just good sportsmanship all around. With If nothing else, we've seen that on the field tonight. You know, the team's playing with good sportsmanship. Just simple little errors and great defense from what we've seen. And speaking of great defense, Cavaliers need to make a stand here. Third and 13 following the first incomplete pass, I believe, of the half for Roberts. And there's a whistle, and Waynesfield will take their first timeout. We will take one as well with three minutes to go in the third quarter. We'll be back with more high school football on NK Telco Sports. At Wilson Health, we're extending care beyond the walls of the hospital with resources designed to keep you in charge of your health. Our independence and connection to the community are unique in a world where big healthcare strives to act like corporations. Our tools may be the same, but we are different. We're neighbors, friends, and family who truly care about the people who live here. We call it caring without limits, and it's just the beginning of a whole new Wilson Health. Three minutes, one seconds left. I'll let Matt go through some of our sponsors here. Yeah, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Grand Lake Health, uh, presenting the high school athletics at, on NK Telco Sports. And then American Trim, Frost Roofing, Hometown Opportunity, Minster Bank, Ply Gym, Precision Strips, Schwederman Pharmacy, New Knoxville Supply, Fowler's TV, Cy Schwederman, Wilson Health, Carriage Works, Kogi Plumbing, Heating and Air Conditioning, Securecom, uh, Cargill, The Spot, St. Henry Bank, St. Mary's Foundry, and Wagner's IGA, along with Wayne Trail. Thank you to those sponsors that allow us to bring you this and tonight's Northwest Central Conference football. Waynesfield and Lehman Catholic, and on a big third down play, Cooper Roberts connects to number 12. Is that Blake Barnes on the far side? It is number 12, a critical or huge pass and catch I'm looking is there a penalty down and I missed it not at all there's 20 that's a 20 yard there pass a, nice wide open pass play no there is a penalty there is a legal shift maybe so take it back five more okay so it went from the 47 which would have put the ball down near the 30 for first down instead now we're going to go back across midfield to the 48 to Waynesfield territory and boy self-destruction again Penalties, penalties, penalties. Give it to the chain gang. They have not moved until the referee absolutely tells them it's time to go. Anymore, you about to take double look to see once if you saw a flag on the field as it's been well laundered tonight. And now brings up third down and I think it kind of goes with the territory 15. of this field at this, because last time we called a game here, like we said, there was over almost 500 yards and penalties. 500? 500. It was, it was, and possible to keep up with the penalty yardage. Cooper Roberts, boy, nice. Oh, <laughs> Holy cow, that catch by Blake Barnes to the 29 as another penalty in the backfield. It was a heck of a play. It's Watch it here again as it looked like he was under some pressure. Nice ball dropped in there, but wipe out the catch, holding on the offense, move them back. 10 more yards from the spot. This is going to, it looks like the flag's laying on the 41, so. This is gonna take them back more than that. Yeah, this will put it back maybe on a 31 yard line. If it's 10 from the flag, we'll see once where the official ball is put down, but we've had some great catches that don't count uh, here right. by the Tigers. Now I'm a firm believer in any, any given play. If you want to find a hold, you can find a hold. I truly believe that. But this kid's just completed a 20-yard pass, you pull him back. He completes a 23-yard, you pull him back. If he completes this 33-yarder, they just need to give it to him. He, he's earned it. It's about third down and 31. If my third down and 33, they do a short screen attempt here. They catch Searson, but well defended by a host of Cavaliers. A short gain of maybe three yards passing on the pass reception, and that'll bring up finally a fourth down and no penalty marker on the field. And 
Well, the defense, you know, after this big drive started after Lehman scored a touchdown, Waynesfield, a couple big runs by their stud running backs, and you think, boy, there's the momentum, but now the Cavaliers, other than losing some time, they're gonna have a, a decent chance for some great field position. You only got one back from one back, Lehman, so. so this means they might be coming. That, or if he kicks it away from him, will it take a Waynesfield bounce and, you know, scoot down closer to the 20? Running it down is Bertini. He will again, again fair catch it, but catch it on a one hop. They will take over on the 34 yard line. So another awkward series for the Tigers as they just kind of did some good things and then just self destructed again. They give it up on the punt. More importantly now for the Cavaliers of Lehman, can they duplicate that good drive they had offensively, their last possession, which resulted in their first points and got the time out a on time the field. out on the field. So we'll take one again. With a minute 35 left to go in the third quarter, you're watching high school football and NK Telco Sports. Hi, I'm Mallory. My grandpa's been making the world's worst pizza for 30 years. That doesn't look like the world's worst pizza. Grandpa, I know why they call you Chunky Bob. It's because you use chunky ingredients on your pizza. Of course, it's not because I'm fat. Grandpa, this is the world's best pizza. Keyhole Pizza, come check Grandpa out. Dine in or carry out. Welcome back to Sydney Memorial Stadium. I'm Jeff Henshin. Alongside me this evening is Matt Average, and we've had a kind of an awkward game to call tonight. Um, it's it's still anyone's ball game. A lot of time left, but we've had a host of penalties, some turnovers, and you know some good catches that were nullified by penalties and. You know, some drives that in this case, Waynesfield really could have put the hurting on Lehman, but gave it back to them following some penalties and miscues. So it, it's um, been a kind of a, a weird game, but um, here we sit, 21 7, a chance for the Cavaliers, Matt, to make a statement on offense. Yeah, Lehman taking the time out there after the kick. Maybe wanting to reset their offense, and here they come out running again, and that's what they started out doing the second half, and it's been consistently good. Well, they move it out from the 34 to the 38. Each team now with two timeouts, as Matt said, Lehman took a timeout following that punt. Each team with two timeouts, clock moving at 1, 12 and counting. Third quarter, second and six. Bertini quickly to the outside, open receiver in and out and through Brendan O'Leary's hands and brings up on that incomplete pass. They bring up third down and six. Reminder that Brendan O'Leary and also Hope Anthony King and Queen, respectively, tonight at Lehman Catholic. So congratulations to them as they celebrate homecoming this weekend at Lehman Catholic. Minute three left. Bertini on a critical third down here will look to number 12, Drew Barhorse, for some positive yards. He gets just a couple, Matt, and not going to be enough. And you almost think it's got to be a punt here on fourth down and four. I think at this point, with as well as the defense is playing, I'd keep him out I there. I mean, and you got to give it to Bertini. Mm. He's thrown three interceptions, one pick six, and he's still unfazed. He's, he's still slinging it out well, there. It appears so. they're going to go for it. This is a big gamble inside their own territory. I think they might be trying to draw him off. Play clock at 10. They snap the ball and in untouched three on three, if you will, as Joe Rickle sacks Bertini. Number three for the Tigers, all over number three for Seven the Cavaliers. Balls. Here's the replay. You just see him I come in. He comes in from the left side, side and blind you know, he's side. a speedy running back. We've seen that. But boy, the blind side is right. Big turnover on downs. Nice job of tackling, too. Didn't lower the head, just came in, hit him chest on shoulder, and took him down. So first and 10 on the 34. 18 seconds to go in the third quarter. And like you said, a good job of clean tackling. You just sometimes those guys, you know, I shouldn't say there's a, a violent hit, and you got to be careful you don't leave with a helmet. And a fine job by Joel Rickle, who's done it on both sides of the field. He's, he's thrown for a touchdown, five remember yards. that. As a penalty, we'll move him back nope, to time, the 38. Nope, timeout called, timeout called. Nope, timeout before the penalty. So with 18 seconds to go, we'll take another timeout and come back with more football here on NK Telco Sports. 
Take your game day party to the next level with a new TV and Sono sound system from Valor's TV in St. Mary's. A Sono system takes the action into every room of your home and outdoors. Break your home into zones and control the content and level right from your phone or tablet, enabling you to enjoy the game or not with the touch of a finger. Add a security camera system connected to your TV from Valor's and never leave another friend stuck outside in the cold. Valor's TV, taking game day to the next level. Welcome back here. Um, trying to get through the end of the third quarter. It's been a long one, Matt. Uh, the 12 minute game clock has lasted much longer than that. We've had a lot of events here in this third quarter. And, and a lot of laundry. I mean, just I anything you can think of to extend the game and the time, it's, it's happened. And more, you know, back when, and, and the, I should say the Tigers defense comes up with a huge play. Lehman rolls the dice on fourth and six inside their own territory. Not only do they stop them, but get a sack, a loss of seven yards, get a little bit better field position. And this is where we're at now, first and 10 from the 33 as Waynesfield takes their second time out of the half. They're down to one. And they hand it off to Rickle, and he is stopped for a big chunk, negative yards there of about four yards and moving back to the 37. And one of the rare times that the Lehman Cavaliers have been able to get him for negative yards. And as the clock winds down to zero, we will switch sides. Three 12 minute quarters are in the book. We'll come back to start the fourth one here on NK Telco Sports. New Knoxville Supply Company, the supply source for residential, commercial, and industrial jobs. We specialize in plumbing products from many name brands, electrical products from replacing a light switch to rewiring an entire house, heating, air conditioning, and geothermal products, sheet metal ductwork, installations, and service. We are now housing more inventory, so all the hardware items you need to complete the job are available right away. New Knoxville Supply. Stop in, call, or check us out online at newknoxvillesupply.com. Welcome back here as we start the fourth quarter and a long lengthy third quarter it was in that quarter though had a couple scores Lehman got their first touchdown and Waynesfield put up two more scores almost back to back Lehman I'm sorry Waynesfield went ahead 13 nothing on a pass from Roberts to late Leighton Campbell and followed that up with a 25 yard interception return for touchdown by Barnes and that made it 19, actually 21 on a two-point conversion, and then it wasn't until that next drive that Lehman able to score a touchdown, a two-yard run by Drew Barhorst, their first score in over six quarters. So 21-7 we sit right now as we start the final 12 minutes. Now you talk about the time of game, if you will, Matt. It's, it's getting down to not many possessions left. Absolutely, and Lehman needs a turnover, and they need it now. Roberts, open receiver, caught in the middle of the field and he might and he will go to the house a 37 yard touchdown and so 10 seconds in and that's a 37 yard strike for touchdown number four roberts hits leighton campbell for the big score that's his second td of the half here's the replay he comes right across the middle in no man's land on the drag play and he is in a lot of speed there. As I said, Campbell had a there was a penalty on the field, but it was on the defense. Well, that's Campbell's had some big touchdowns. That one 37 yards. His first one was 43 yards. So some big time receiving plays. receiving yards there for Leighton Campbell. Score puts it at 27 to 7 as Ryder Siebenek will try the PAT. Just like that, it's through. So a quick score for the Tigers. The score 27. We'll take a timeout and come back with more football here on NK Telco Sports. In the Grand Lake Health System, great health care is about creating a personalized experience. We're here for you at every stage of your life to care for you with compassion and courtesy to support you with an honest approach that values communication and actively seeks your collaboration, to treat you in a safe, welcoming environment where quality and service always come first, to create truly grand experiences. For more, visit grandlakehealth.org slash grandexperience. 
American Trim's story started in 1951, and our long family legacy continues today. We are a third-generation family-owned business with locations in Sydney and Walpaw, and we are hiring for manufacturing positions on first, second, and third shifts. Part-time and full-time positions are available for entry-level and skilled individuals. Please apply at www.amtrim.com or in person. American Trim is a proud sponsor of high school sports and our communities. Come be part of our story. Welcome back here, 28-7. The Tigers in control now, and they're gonna kick off inside Lehman territory following the penalty that happened on the last touchdown run evidently after the play. So yep. another personal foul, another penalty, and they're gonna move it from their own 40 inside of Lehman Catholic territory to the 45. And I'm not gonna say it's not gonna be on the other side of the 50 before they get it in, in bounds here though, because the kickoff has been and they go Bad. right down the middle this time and results nice in a shot. touchback. So that is where the Cavaliers of Lehman will start. That is a dangerous little kickoff. I mean, it's just a line drive. So the front line really needs to be aware because if it comes at you and it hits you, you know, it's a live ball. And we saw it earlier tonight and uh, it can be very dangerous. And I don't know if that's part of their philosophy, but I think that ball time should be on the 25, correct? I mean, they don't. I this think high in school. high school it's 20. So 20 is where it starts, 11 minutes, 50 seconds to go. And that last touchdown might have been too much for the Cavaliers to overcome. We'll see once here they need to get some points on the board and some positive yards and they get stopped right there at the line of scrimmage for little to no gain. And the clock moving now, we'll see once the tempo picks up a bit as possessions left here in this game are going to be limited and Fans it's been a struggle so far out it, too. And so. it started, you know, they, they've struggled all night to move the ball and had a decent drive in their possession. They scored the touchdown on, but uh, that took a lot of time as well. Everything was kind of deliberate and that one pass is incomplete. So the incomplete pass stops the clock intended receiver is Brendan O'Leary. Tonight is homecoming, as I mentioned earlier, for Lehman. Next week they play at Upper Sauda Valley, a team that's right around 500. And then they play at home against Perry. Perry right now in league play, leading the NWCC at four wins and no losses. So nothing easy for the Cavaliers coming up. A lot of tough competition as Bertini airs it that's out. And nice they're going to get a... Huge score, 80 yards from Bertini to number five, Brendan O'Leary. Huge play, pass was not deflected by the Tigers and, Bert and Brendan O'Leary with the reception goes the distance. Big time play, much needed. Take a look right into your living room. Well thrown and pretty well covered. I mean, the defense was on and they maybe didn't know where the ball was at, but. Well, most importantly, there's no laundry on the field, so. Yes. Well, it happened pretty quick. Those other penalties, a lot of times when Bertini was scrambling is where you got some of the holding calls. 56 seconds, two touchdowns. Quarter number four. Kick is up, it's good. 14-28. So big possession, first. cuts the lead down to two scores. We'll take a timeout and come back with more action here on NK Telco Sport. Schwederman Pharmacies began serving the people of Auglaise County in 1916 when Urban Schwederman purchased the building and business from J.H. Hoffman. The New Bremen location is one of the longest running pharmacies in the country, with over 110 years of serving its patrons. Since then, four more stores have been added, Coldwater, St. Mary's, Minster, and Wapakoneta to round out the group. Our services include prescription refills, home medical equipment, nursing home services, customized compounded medication, vaccinations, and so much more. Well, just when you thought things were a little bleak for the Cavaliers, uh, an 80-yard touchdown uh, pass. Bertini hits O'Leary. He takes it the rest of the distance, or basically to the house. Back to two-score game, 11 minutes left, so not over yet. But that's exactly what the Cavaliers needed. We just talked about how everything had been pretty deliberate. Mm -hmm. Those are big time plays. And now we'll see once that defense can come up with another stop and see once how much time maybe Waynesfield can take off the clock or take off. Yeah, take off the clock and uh, limit the time left for Lehman. 
Picked Field up. it on the 12. Not touched until about there is where over the 30 yard line goes Isaiah Sanders and that's where Waynesfield will start now on the 32 yard line and again momentum now jumps to this side of the field with the Cavaliers and well if I was the Tigers at this point if I was Waynesfield Goshen I would just run the ball the clock's in your favor at this point just eat the clock eat the clock they've been running pretty consistently see if that's what they're planning to do if they're going to air it out some more sophomore quarterback cooper roberts will hand off to joel rickle and four yards or so for rickle clock moving again 10 minutes 45 seconds to go fourth quarter second down and six it's Cavaliers defense, if they can come up with a stop here, give the ball to their offense. A lot of positive, you know, have, have some time, if you will, to make some positive things happen yet. Roberts inside handoff, that's a first down carry for Searson, and he will go out towards the 50. That's the whistle one. blows, so that will nullify any type of fumble. So I'm not for sure how or how Bertini came up with it, but the whistle was blown. So the first down carry from the 36 to the 49. So the another first down. Game. I don't know if we'll give him the 49 or they give him the 50. So the ball is on the 50. First down for Kyle Searson. So the senior coming up big, both Searson and Rickle our senior running backs and they have been the go-to ball carriers tonight. Tyler Solomon just came out of the game limping again for Lehman Catholic. He had that injury earlier in the second half as well. Also big nights coming from Clay or Leighton Campbell, a couple of big time touchdown receptions of 43 and also 37 yards. Is that time Searson a short gain of just one? Inside Lehman Catholic territory at a 49 clock again continues to run. We'll see once how much time the Tigers take off the play clock that right now is at 20 seconds. And they've been snapping the ball right around 11 here on this series so far. I think I would take it all the way down to four or five. They shuffle their lineup around and clock now down to five. And as you said, Matt, much more consumption of time here as they pitch it out to to number three Joel Rickle and flag down it's going to be a hold in the backfield going to take them back another 10. No gain as the penalty will move it back so a break for the Cavaliers but they need to get the downs now too that's it'll probably be a replay of second down and yeah, it's going to be a, basically a 14 yard penalty because it right where the flag lies is where that hold started at and that flag is on to 47 so it should move it back unless they decline it because they might maybe talking to you to want the result of the play which might be what they do because Rickle lost yard so Maybe coach and they are going to leave it right there for a loss of one. It. Yep, it he declined it. So the loss of yards on the ray, the play yes. puts the ball at the 50. So loss of one. Clock and should start because he declined the penalty. So it does not start yet. There it goes. So third down 10. Big play here for the defensive layman. The Tigers of Waynesfield will look to try to get. A first down here and boy good tackle good pursuit in the backfield John Edwards and he is throwing Searson down for another loss of yards down to the 46 and now that will bring out the punt unit for the Waynesfield Tigers and again we've mentioned it you mentioned it Matt earlier has been they've been close at getting a hand on Joshua Kirchner's kick we'll see once they send well, they dropped two guys back, so maybe set up maybe for a better return. Kirchner gets an end over end kick away. It bounces on to 25 and will go inside the 20. Nice kick down to the 10 yard line. So good job by the punter, Joshua 
Well, Lehman scored Kirchner. 80 yards real quick on one play, so 90's not that much more. You're right. So the team's coming but, um, back out. Got to make sure you. Was there another penalty, Matt? Uh, sure looks like it is there. Calling first down and. Okay. I don't know how you can get a penalty on a kick okay. where you free catch it. No, yeah, don't even catch it at all. But right. you know, there's blocking. The blockers don't know if the guy down the field, the receiver in this case, is going to catch it or let it bounce. And so it a must four have, yard penalty. Yeah, half a distance. So that's down inside, inside the, the six, six yard line. So make it first and what, 94 or so. <laughs> you don't need, I mean, obviously eight minutes, 14 seconds left. I would say Lehman needs to get points on this drive without taking a whole lot of time left or to using a whole lot of time as that one deflected, nearly hit the official on the head. And I think Searson nearly came up with the INT. It was almost a pick six for the Tigers. So second down on the incomplete pass. Stops the clock with eight minutes and 10 seconds left in quarter number four. Score 28-14 if you're just joining us here. Waynesville Goshen up on Lehman Catholic. Mentioned uh, Cavaliers really need a, a win tonight. They are three and one in conference play, but a loss would probably knock them out of playoff contention for the first time in seven seasons. Open receiver is number four, Nathan Salman. First down catch out to the 19. And they will move the chain, so give them maybe the 20. No laundry on the field, so that's a first down. Oh, you're right, I'm sorry, because they started this on the four, so they get out to the 19, a first down on the pass. Clock running now under eight minutes. Long way to go for the Cavaliers, but a new set of downs and a little bit further away from their goal line. That pass is caught by Gabe Kanapke. He Keep stays in bounds. Move it out to the 27, and to Bertini hits Gabe Kanapke, a 6'1 senior. This time they're much more, again, the hurry up offense now, realizing possessions are limited. The defense is going to get much more winded than what the offense is in a hurry up. Brandon O'Leary, first down catch, will stop the clock as he gets out to the 32. Another one for four. So again, the defense for right now, Waynesfield, don't give up the 80 yard play like it did last time. Keep everything in front of you and do your best to keep the catch and no yards after catch and keep it in front. Let the clock continue to run. This is all working all the summer long in the heat. This is what this is for is right here. The two minute drill. Bertini's pass over or intended I should say for Brendan O'Leary. Nearly with the interception was Leighton Campbell. Stops clock 705 left. So the Cavaliers have trailed throughout the game and have not played offensively real crisp, but beginning here, I should say maybe a better offensive performance in the second half. Absolutely. Getting some more positive yards. The first half was a, a lot of negative play, so in trouble is Bertini, able to escape a couple defenders, and we'll throw that one out of bounds and bring up third down and 10 on back-to-back -back incompletions. Good job by the Tigers' defense, and they're getting some good pursuit and just no one opened downfield as Bertini scrambling had to get rid of it. He's eight of 13 in the second half on his passing much better than what it was on the five of 11 in the first half. Did have a pick six earlier in this half. One of his incompletions, an interception. And he also has two touchdowns over 35 yards on both, so. Okay, handoff. Whoa, oh, face that's a mask. face mask. Uh, look, then it is going to be called and another foul. This could be a double. You know, there was, yeah, you just hope that uh, things don't get too wild here. But boy, that was, Barhorse got bent backwards. Uh, just, um, yeah, that luckily is, he's okay. I don't know if, you got, if they can double penalize that or was there a second There one? was a second penalty over here on the other side for a personal and as I well. I don't think you can double dip, if you will. It depends on if they're calling on personal fouls or unnecessary roughness. Face mask, defense, which we saw. So probably the same penalty, they're calling yep. the same one. So penalty will move it from the 33 
Should move it out near midfield, maybe the 40. The wrong 48, it was on the 33, 15 yards. Wouldn't it be the 48 on the other the side? side? That's what. But it was on the 33. Right, the ball was, but when, when the face mask occurred. Oh, from the spot? Yeah. Got you. Okay, 48 yard line. New life and better field position and intercepted by number 12, Blake Barnes. He had a pick six earlier. Give him another big time interception here. Blake Barnes, take a look at it here as he will stifle this drive here. Bertini, pretty much time, just did not see Barnes step in front of O'Leary. And, and that should pretty much do it. That really is going to put the Cavaliers in a big time hole with just six minutes, 30 seconds to go, I would expect a dose of Searson and a dose of Rickle and another dose of one or the other here to kind of kill the clock and take some time off as the Rickle will be the first option around the right side. And he has tackled for a couple yards gain. But uh, wow, that was a, again, Tigers had, turnover. Had, yeah, and that, that was the ultimate disaster there because the Waynesfield had a couple penalties that helped the Cavaliers get into Waynesfield territory. And then a big, you know, the mistake, the turnover gives it back to the Tigers and the clock slowly winds under six now, play clock at 15 and Lehman does have two timeouts left. Advantage running team at this oh, point. Oh yes, very much so. When you have two big or two good backs and Rickle and Searson, it's gonna be tough to get him stopped and Searson two hands on the football. A gain of about seven down to the 36. And as the coach, that's what you wanna see. Just short of the first, use all three downs to get the first and just eat at that clock 35 seconds at a time. A win tonight for the Tigers of Waynesfield Goshen will push them to six and two overall, three and two in the NWCC. And again, remember they came in at position eight in region 28. Need to win out themselves if they want to assure a week 11 game. And there's a first down carry. They'll move the chains. So the first down rush yard or, or the play there nets a first down. And a loss tonight probably is going to eliminate the Cavaliers. Again, a, a good run of six in a row for sure while in the Northwest Central Conference of playoff appearances. And Waynesfield, again, this group of seniors, they've got to feel good about themselves. They were freshmen when Coach Wireman came aboard. I believe they went 0 and 10, 2 and 8, 5 and 5 last year, and a win tonight will push them to 6 and 2. So uh, hats off to them for hanging in there and and competing and getting better as a penalty marker is down. So it will be an illegal motion. So take them back five. And we've seen that all night too as well. You know, you got momentum going, everything's going the way you want and boom, yellow flag. Me so personally, Jeff, I'm a little chilly out here and I work um, in the elements. Hmm. This is, I can you should be used you. to this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not the one complaining, at least not admitting it. It is, uh, you know, it's it's not bad. It's it's not too windy. We're sitting outside here at Sydney Memorial Stadium, a nice place for football. And, uh, you know, it's kind of what football is. It, it Maybe when it starts in August, September, you have some of those games that kick off. It's near the 70 or, you know, low 80 sometimes. And it does, doesn't always feel like football tonight. A uh, good night for the players to, Play as Searson stumbles forward near that first down marker. That's what you got to like about this stadium, too. You look at one end, it's got the black and yellow for the Yellow Jackets, and on the other end, you got the blue and yellow for the Lehman Cavaliers. Very nicely shared stadium between the two schools. In this stadium, they went to this turf, I'm not for sure how many years ago. It hasn't been just too long ago. They went from grass to turf and they've been able to host some playoff games and you know I think it's an easy you know nice venue good parking it's almost like a small campus for a small college it's um, they've got a lot of nice facilities around here and a good place for football and they'll probably be hosting some week 11 games or I should say week 12 as 
They muscle forward to the Tigers for a first down. Between Pickwood the, now, St. Mary's has a nice field. Sydney here, Walpock. I mean, there's nice field, nice turf fields all around. I mean, oh, when I was in high school myself, we had to travel all the way to the Glass Bowl. Toledo. I'm sorry, the Glass Glass Bowl was even grass back then. Our first turf game was actually at Maslin. Was when we first wore turf shoes for the state title. So. Definitely uh, something that these kids have that is it nice. it's safer and it's yeah. nicer. It's much better playing condition than the old Asher turf. So first down for the Tigers as they will look to run out the clock as Frickle, or Rickle, I should say, Joel Rickle, tackle for a short gain as we approach the final three minutes of this contest. Northwest Central Conference matchup tonight. Clock falling under three minutes. And for the Tigers, they will pull away tonight with a win, and then they are at home against Elgin next week, who has winless on the season entering tonight's game, and then finish with a pretty good Heart of Northern team away. So they're gonna have to win out to try to make week 11. Will the Tigers, and can't overlook anyone, but will have a winnable game against Elgin, and then they're gonna have to play very well on the road at Heart of Northern, who's Currently five and two overall. As and that's a touchdown. Searson will put the icing on the cake if it wasn't already, and he will run in from 16 yards out. So that will give the Tigers their 34th point. Take another look at it here. Searson again, the short, quick handoff, and that's a that's a tough load to bring down. He's been he's been a workhorse. And he runs downhill, just nice all around player. All night has Searson been running the well and on for the extra point will become Sebenek. And this will make it right now a 20 point spread to put it back to 21 with two minutes, 22 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. And kick is blocked. So someone for the Cavaliers got a hand on him or on the ball. No penalty marker on the field. Nope. So we'll take a break with the Tigers of Waynesfield on top of the Cavaliers of Lehman, 34 to 14 here on NK Telco Sports. Supply Gem Residential Solutions is part of Cornerstone Building Brands, North America's largest manufacturer of exterior building products. And the success of our company is directly related to the contributions of our employees. We are currently looking for machine operators, maintenance technicians, forklift operators, and more to join our growing team at our facility in Sydney, Ohio. Supply Gem offers competitive pay, a full benefits package, as well as opportunities for bonus pay and long-term advancement. Become a part of our strong foundation. Two minutes, 22 seconds left. Touchdown by Kyle Searson of 16 yards. Has the Tigers on top now by 20 again as the PAT was blocked. But not much time or not enough time for the Cavaliers probably to make a, a good comeback. They. Made it interesting on the big 80 yard pass from Bertini to O'Leary who O'Leary probably caught it after about 50 yards and then ran the final 30 but uh, not able to get another drive as it was intercepted or I should say on the next drive by Barnes and then able to <laughs> score the for the Tigers with um, the touchdown by Kyle Searson and with 217 left, that is where now the Cavaliers will take over and try to put a score on the board before the clock goes off. And right now they're season three and four on the year. This will be their second NWCC loss. They will drop to three and two and three and five overall. So tough night for the Cavaliers offense. And then a number of turnovers. I think Matt came up with six. I mean, yeah, in a total of six turnovers. You're just not going to win many football games with six turnovers. And right now, though, look for the passing arm of Bertini to try to find an open receiver. And they hand it off. So a little change up there. And I believe that's number four, Nathan Salmon. I think at this point, you're down to two minutes left in the game. You just go ahead, run the ball, get out of the game. You got no injuries and enjoy your season. I mean, for Lehman, or for Lehman, you know the season is done. For Waynesville Goshen, the good thing is 
this is a decent layman team that could throw some upsets up there and get you the computer points that it may require for you later in the season to get into week 11. Salmon thrown for a loss. Back to about the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and nine. As the final few minutes of action take place here as the Waynesville Tigers will have a pleasant ride home. And there's a whistle and uh, let's see. I don't see a penalty marker. But a game they're going to reset the play clock to 25 and go again. So the play clock runs at 25 game clock running at one minute 10 seconds. Third down seven. Bertini pass in and out and through the hands of Gabe Kanapke. Clock stops fourth down and I would expect probably Lehman to go for it here and absolutely. And now we got a couple of uh, scores coming in. Anna all over Coldwater, 49-7. 49-8. 49-8. all over them. And, and then Anna beat, or I'm Minster. sorry, Minster beating uh, Marion Local. Marion Local. So, if so our math is right, a four-way tie for the MAC right now. That could get really interesting yeah, that, come that, playoff that, time. That makes a lot of. Do they all make it? You know, there'll be a number of MAC teams make it as Layman will take a timeout. We'll take one with 62 seconds left in the game. Timeout here on the field. You're watching high school football on NK Telco Sports. Carriage Works has expanded and now can hold up to 25 cars in our service bay. Carriage Works thrives on customer satisfaction. We accomplish that by providing top of the line technology. Carriage Works now uses a laser beam system to measure down to the millimeter of factory specs to better service you and get you back on the road. CarriageWorks has a brand new top of the line paint booth that uses waterborne paint. There's no job too big or too small for CarriageWorks. We are certified collision specialists. Come in and see us today. Coach Richard Roll mentioned earlier, head coach of the Cavaliers, his 13th season. They had made a, a playoff appearance the past six seasons as members of the Northwest Central Conference, but um, that streak probably is going to come to an end. Waynesfield Goshen keeps their hopes alive. They've been to the playoffs four times. Their last time to the postseason, week 11, was back in 2012. So they um, have turned things around here after some tough seasons and played pretty well tonight. And the fake punt, the high pass is intercepted. And then good move by Leighton Campbell just to simply catch it and take the knee. And with 56 seconds, I would expect a couple of victory formation snaps by Cooper Roberts and uh, the game will be over and the Tigers will move to six and two overall. Layman will drop to three and five. So once that is over, we'll take a short break then and uh, come back and wrap things up here from Sydney Memorial Stadium and Go through our stats and our player of the game tonight. As victory formation, always the best position for the offense to be in. If you're the team on top and the knee is taken, and to see what's with the new clock system, the clock, the 40-second clock starts immediately after the whistle. So in the years past, you kind of delay that and wait till it got under 40 and start it. But uh, they're going to take one more snap, and then the teams will shake hands and. That will wrap up week number eight here from Sydney Memorial Stadium and a battle of blue and yellow tonight and the Oglaze County squad of Tigers defeats the Shelby County based Lehman Catholic School 34 to 14. The teams meet at midfield. We'll take a break, come back and wrap things up here. You've watched high school football on NK Telco Sports. For over 150 years, Cargill has been helping people be successful worldwide. Cargill has always done business responsibly and in a way that makes us proud. Whether it is educating farmers in India or providing bikes to students with perfect attendance right here at home, Cargill is helping people thrive. The Sydney plant is just one piece of a global company that provides employment for hundreds of thousands, food for the world, and support for thousands of businesses. Be a part of something great at Cargill.com. 
Kogi Plumbing and Heating is your Bryant Factory authorized dealer. We have brought the best of comfort, control, and plumbing services to the St. Mary's area for over 60 years. We have been Reader's Choice winners for the last four years running and excel at providing our customers with efficient and reliable heating and air conditioning as well as responsive service when a plumbing emergency arises. We insist that the products we install in our customers' homes and businesses offer the same performance and value that we expect ourselves. Call today for your next plumbing and heating or air conditioning needs. Bryant, whatever it takes. At First National Bank, we are working hard to make your life a little easier. With products like Card Valet, an app allowing you to control your cards with real-time notifications, transaction restrictions, and spending limits. The ability to access your money through 55,000 all-point ATMs across the country, surcharge free. Live customer support when you need it. And online and mobile banking, allowing you to gain access to your financial information wherever and whenever you like. First National Bank, making your life a little easier. Welcome back to City Memorial Stadium where the Tigers of Waynesfield have beat the Cavaliers of Lehman Catholic 34 to 14 with their game stats. Here is Matt Everidge. All right, looking at final game stats and we'll start with the visitors from Waynesfield Goshen. They scored 34 points on 316 total yards, 163 yards rushing, 153 yards with the 11 to 22 pass completion percentage of so 50% and only one turnover. And the turnover is the key here. Um, on the Cavaliers side, they scored 14 points on a total yards of 161, only 45 yards rushing, 116 uh, passing yards on a 6 of 18 performance, so passing at 33%, and seven huge turnovers. And that's, and that's the end, of, that's the whole game right there. It really the hurt the Cavaliers, or gave them a quick pick six and just hammered a comeback. So tough break for the Cavaliers as they lose tonight. Um, before we sign off, I want to go through our player of the game tonight. And our player of the game, we're going to give to senior Brendan O'Leary, also the homecoming king tonight, crown. So a big night for him. He had a, a touchdown that got him back to 28-14 late in the third quarter, early in the fourth quarter, an 80-yard strike, a big-time pass, catch, and run. Congratulations to Brendan O'Leary, our player of the game. Our camera people tonight included Xavier Gross, Kurt Kuffner, and Jeremy Birch. Our producers tonight, Bryce Hamrick and Ian Bullheimer. For my partner tonight, Matt Everidge. I am Jeff Henson. We hope that you enjoyed this telecast and thanks for watching here on NK Telco Sports.